Good morning to all attendees out here. Uh, it's 10 o'clock, uh, maybe a little early for many of people during this lockdown time, but it's a big crowd over here already. I can see around uh, almost 200 attendees attending this. So it is gradually increasing also. Uh, this is a drone building workshop, which is to be conducted by the Aero Modeling Club of the University of Engineering and Management, UEM Jaipur. I'm the Vice Chancellor of UEM Jaipur. I'm, my name is Vishwajoy Chatterjee. Alongside me, you can see on the screen, uh, you can see Professor Anurag Hamilton, who is the, uh, who is the head of this Aero Modeling Club, and Professor Umesh Gurnani, who is the head of the Mechanical Engineering Department. Uh, Mr. Hamid Siddiqui, he will be the trainer for today's uh, for today, he will be training how to build the uh, build a basic drone. So I think I should not waste more time over here because you are all over here to learn how to build a drone, not to listen to me. Uh, but I will request Professor Anurag to say a little bit about this before uh, it is handed over to Mr. Hamid for the training to start. Professor Anurag, it's over to you. Thank you, sir. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Dr. Anurag Hamilton, and I welcome you on the behalf of the Department of Mechanical Engineering. Uh, Amit, can you please go to the second uh, slide? UEM Aero Modeling Club was established in 2017 under the Department of Mechanical Engineering. Since its inception, it is working towards creating innovative projects. UEM Aero Modeling Club is also involved in training and development of students by conducting various workshops. Uh, next slide, please. Now I'll be showing you some of the projects that have been completed by the club. So on the top left, you can see Habrock. Habrock is an ornithopter. It can mimic the flying of the bird. This project is completed by the students. On the bottom right, you can see RC aircraft. This is also completed by the students. And next slide, please. On the bottom right, you can see it's a quadcopter. It's an autopilot quadcopter. This is also completed by the students of the club. And now I'll show you the interesting one. On the top left, you can see Valarsi. Valarsi is actually a VTOL aircraft. It can do vertical takeoff and landing. This is under development. Students are working on it. And it's really interesting because, you know, it can be used as a medical drone and it can be used as an agriculture drone also. As you know that the state of Rajasthan and several states of northern India is facing with the problem of locusts. So you can just spray insecticides and pesticides using this locust and you can uh, fight that problem and at the same time it uses real-time kinematics okay it's a totally new thing and it can stabilize itself in the mid-air so these are some of the projects uh, that we have completed and that are under uh, we can say development and for this project Valasi the club has also received the funding of 1.5 lakhs and students are working on it and now I'll just uh, request Mr. Hamid to take over and uh, he will start with the workshop now it's over to Mr. Hamid yeah, good morning, all of you. Thank you, sir, for introducing uh, our morning club. And uh, good morning, all the teachers present here. Actually, uh, yeah, this workshop uh, is based on basic principles and construction of drone. So we will, in this workshop, we will be making drone. Like I will uh, teach you like how to build drone and what are the necessary components to build drone. So first of all, and also we have to know the drone regulation in India because it is a very important to fly the drone in India. There are some regulation and some limitations which you should be know uh, to fly drone. And there are several classification for the, uh, so during this workshop path flow, we will be dealing with uh, uh, like multi, uh, aerodynamics and some drone essentials. So uh, actually it's important to know some uh, some short of aerodynamics because as we uh, we have seen that uh, there are some students who are non uh, like from background the background of that students are non technical so i will be trying to make it very very much simple and uh, don't uh, bother like you will be not able to understand it will be very simple anyone can understand easily so it's necessary aerodynamics is necessary because you have to know that how the drone flies and 
you have to know because a flyer like if you are building a drone then you have to fly so you have to know aerodynamics basics uh, aerodynamics so that you can counter the airflow resistance of airflow so uh, because of that you can prevent your drone to be crashed like prevent uh, from crash and second we will learn about drone essentials more important drone essentials which is used for building drone and then we will go on for design selection and then we will go for setup of so type and programming connection of kk 2.1.5 LCD controller board. This is a flight controller board and uh, assembly calibration then setting and tuning which is has to be done uh, so that you can uh, because most of you uh, are beginner uh, for this work uh, like drone. So uh, you should know the setting and tuning uh, so as to fly it comfortably fly the drone comfortably. Second we will use one more uh, uh, like uh, controller board as a CC3D uh, open pilot controller board. So most of you have uh, must have confusion like why we are using two controller board two flight controller board the reason is like the above one the kk 2.1.5 is a uh, like it can uh, go for that one because of two uh, advances and advantages and disadvantages the advantage for kk 2.1.5 is uh, it can fly up to octacopter like eight motors it can configure but cc3d can only go for uh, six uh, uh, hexacopter six motors the only difference between these two is uh, like uh, the configuration, the setup of KK 2.5 is a very lengthy and uh, uh, also basics, but uh, it is lengthy. But for CC 3D, is very simple and steady. Like you don't have to uh, go and uh, set up uh, step by step uh, differently, like a uh, uh, part by part. Only in in one go you can set up CC 3D. So I will be dealing with that because uh, in CC 3D you can use also for racing drone. Most of have uh, most of you must have fascination of racing drone. So you can use CC3D as a racing drone. Uh, so next I will go for flying practice shots. So, uh, okay, so from this, I'm starting this workshop. Our first slide is introduction to drone and UAV. So uh, like uh, we generally use drone as a word for to signify any of the flying object, which is uh, remotely controllable or uh, like it's uh, automatic uh, auto autopilot drone. So actually, basically, the drone is uh, which is having zero intelligence. The drone is not having its intelligence. It it only depends on the manual control or remote uh, RC control, like a remote control, remote controllable uh, drone, a flying ob flying object. So it is not also pre-programmed. The mission uh, which is given to drone is not pre-programmed. You set it manually. But for UAV, on the other hand, we'll have some great of some great degree of auto uh, like automatic intelligence. The Valarsi you saw, the VTOL one, is having a UAV. It's having an automatic intelligence. We don't have to control manually. It will do fully. Uh, the drone is fully autopilot. Like it is fully automatic. So uh, this is are the two major difference between UAV and drone. So but in generally we you say uh, like drone. We are flying drone or we are building drone. Uh, but the difference with an actual scientific difference is drone is having zero intelligence UAV is having a great degree of intelligence and also UAV can communicate uh, with its controller uh, to return payload data like what the payload is something like uh, the uh, flying object like aircraft or drone or uh, like multi-copter it's carrying the payload like some kind of camera or some kind of uh, anything which is your the, which is the mission requirement okay and also it can such as electro optic or thermal tv images uh, together its primary state information is uh, position airspeed heading and altitude like it can also give you information about position airspeed heading or uh, like with direction it is heading and altitude but drone will not give such such a uh, like can't feed such kind of data to your ground control station uh, you could say in simple language to your laptop uh, so, uh, uh, so you you should have a, like you should not be confused with UAV and drones. Okay, now I'll move to this. Some these are the some drone regulation in India. You should know uh, if you are building any drone. Uh, you if are like if you want to commercialize your drone uh, rather than flying just in domestic, or if you want to get authorized with the government of India, you should have UIN unique identification number, which costs around one thousand for having this number. Second, you will have UAOP, like Unmanned Aerial Operator Permit. That's cost around 25,000 above 200 feet. Below 200 feet, you should have, like, uh, you, uh, it's not like necessary to have this uh, Unmanned Aerial Operator Permit. So above 60 meter, you should have this UAP. Otherwise, uh, there will be some penalty charges against you. 
and second uh, so for flying micro and nano drones so i will deal with this uh, with what is micro drone and nano drone you don't have to have the uin and uap both uaop both so it's it's not required uh, and second some these are do's and don'ts you should remember uh, while flying uh, according to rpas remotely pilot uh, piloted aircraft system uh, the government of india some do's is like ensure your drone is digital sky is in digital sky what does this digital sky mean like there, there is a website uh, on google if, if you will register on this digital sky you should, you, you can see here the link here this is the link uh, HTA, like digital sky.dgca.gov.in when you will go on this link you will register your drone and after registering your drone uh, you will be uh, like authorized to fly only in that region which is digital sky that means which is not a military sky like uh, air force sky or uh, you could say that the sky which is under control of air force uh, so you have to know that before flying you should check whether it is a digital sky or not and uh, and secondly uh, obtain uin from dgca which is directive general civil aviation uh, which is the of government of india for operating in controlled airspace and FX it in on your drone. Uh, obtain unma unmanned aerial operator permit, which I discussed later, like uh, UAOP, what is uh, UAOP. So if applicable from DGCA for commercial operation and keep it handy, okay? And these are several, like ensure that uh, drone is good condition so that uh, there is no damage or anything. And also keep an eye on interference. Like when you are flying, just uh, don't do like uh, when you are flying the drone, look anywhere else and fly the drone. You should be focused on the on your drone. You shouldn't lose your focus from the drone. Otherwise, there will be a hazardous like damage to drones and other public area if uh, if anything happens such like that. And don'ts, uh, some don'ts are there. Like don't don't fly a nano drone above 50 feet. It's recommended. Don't fly a micro drone above 200 feet don't fly a don't fly drones more than 400 feet that is 120 meter from the ground level it is restricted uh, in india and don't fly drone near other aircrafts like if uh, any aircraft is flying by so don't fly there don't fly drone near airports and heliports like it will be uh, severe, uh, severe damage it can cause some mishappings and also don't fly drone over groups of people like if if you want to fly the drone go in open field or don't uh, fly the drone in garden or you you are saying yeah it is open space i can fly the drone no uh, it will it can happen that the above uh, after flying the drone uh, in the sky uh, the battery may lose or uh, the connection may lose so it can it can cause damage to other people in the uh, that uh, park or garden so fly in the uh, place like in football ground in a place where there is no people and it's open area try to maintain discipline uh, during flying drone because it's a very useful thing but yet it is very dangerous if it crashes on anybody else okay and don't fly drone over government area like facilities or for example military base or any other no drone zone there are some sign boards which, which will appear to be no drone zone so don't fly it there because it may you may face a problem hello it's audible you may continue amit you may continue okay so this is classification of drone and uav uh, so what i told like micro mini is this one like uh, micro uh, micro is uh, less than the mass of the micro drone should be less than 0 0.2 pound okay you can convert in kg and uh, you can get it it's around uh, 200 gram kind of uh, so and uh, the size of the drone should be less than 10 centimeter okay and the normal app operating attitude uh, altitude for micro drone is less than 50 feet and the range is 0 0.1 to 0 0.5 kilometer so you can see mini also there are some uh, range and uh, like limitations so when so like when you are flying these drones you shouldn't cross this range you shouldn't cross this altitude or uh, of course the uh, endurance will not uh, go beyond one hour because uh, it's a mini drone okay the battery capacity will only be uh, eligible for one hour only 
because if you increase uh, the battery capacity then weight will increase so you it will uh, like you have to have increase the motor and all kv rating and all so this will um, like increase the weight so it will no more mini drone it will shift to some other configuration so this is very small which is around uh, you could say that the classification small also a uh, 5 to 10 pound and uh, from micro to small we have built in our workshop like a workshop uh, aero modeling club workshop from micro to small and uh, you could say that uh, like medium large tactical combat tactical combat means like uh, uh, you could say predator predator is a drone which is uh, which is tactical combat uh, combat drone and uh, other is like india is having rustam rustam is a drone which is fixed wing drone those these are fixed wing drone so these are tactical combat drone okay which ranges from 1000 to 20000 pound and it can have a flight endurance to 5 to 12 hours and it can uh, fly up uh, normal operating speed or altitude is 10000 to 30000 feet there are some male and hail male are medium altitude long endurance uh, drone and hal are uh, like uh, uh, high altitude long endurance actually i am why i am saying drone because there are more drones which are manually operated and there are also uavs in male and hail like hail you could say that uh, uh, there are one drone there is one drone uh, which is uh, black uh, like hawkeye hawkeye which is having um, which is with america so the uh, only one drone is there uh, which uh, like uav is there high altitude long endurance okay now we will shift to some classification of drones based on mode of operation like you could say that uh, the left top corner is fixed wing other is this is rotary wing which we generally call helicopters uh, and this this is multi rotors which we draw which we generally call uh, drones and this is flapping wing which is called uh, as a perfect name is ornithopter and here you could see duct fan like this one is this one is duct duct fan drone okay and this is a multi rotor configuration which is available uh so here you could say quadcopter generally we say quadcopter to uh four like the drone is having four motors uh, so actually uh, we are talking about there uh, we are talking about plus configuration because the general name for plus configuration is this is plus configuration you'd say the sign the plus plus it is plus sign so you can, we are saying here plus configuration for and the general name for this is quadcopter and this is x copter uh we are you could say here like this is a x configuration okay uh, so we generally call is x copter so when you will operate on software to uh, dump the firmware in the flight controller board so the software will have uh, like it will not have quadcopter uh, the name which is written on the uh, that software is not quadcopter it will show up x copter for x configuration so and you could say here the the like number of motors here designated the motor is designated at its number the left top corner is one uh, like motor number 1 and the second is uh, no, motor number 2 third is uh, like motor number 3 uh, fourth is no, motor number 4 it it moves in anti clockwise direction the numbering goes in anti clockwise direction remember whenever you will do whenever you will uh, like mount the motors uh, keep in the right position and see uh, like the num uh, the position the position of the motor 1 2 3 4 will be in anti clockwise direction motor number 1 motor number 1 will you remember the motor number 1 will rotate in clockwise direction motor number 2 will uh, uh, rotate in anti clockwise direction and the second uh, the same the third one will rotate in clockwise direction that is the diagonal motors will rotate in same direction and the diagonal motors will rotate in the same direction that is anti clock anti clock 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 this is tricopter you could see the direction of the motors for this tricopter hexacopter h6 copter you could say y4 copter why because it is in y configuration y4 copter here is four motor one more motor is below the like third motor okay and here you could see that y6 copter which is um, there are six uh, motors here hexacopter x6 copter and x6 copter so generally we don't go for this uh, for as a beginner we will go for x copter x copter is for uh, initially when we when you start building drones so there are uh, some drone activities uh, first see this video this is uh, like um, the aerial photography what we do with drone and aerial videography it's most like uh, most
people, the common people favor like buy this, buy drones and build drones for this only because uh, photography or aerial uh, videography from drone is very much fascinating. You could uh, put, uh, like uh, take a video of any place, any angle, any height, and it will give a best image uh, that you could see in this video. This all shoots uh, like the all uh, scene is uh, taken from drone. Now you can see the FPV racing, first person view racing. This goggles, this week called FPV goggles. The people wear and do racing with drones. So these are FAV racing. And this video which you are visible on your screen is the feed, feed which is given from the drone, the camera which is installed on the drone. This one. Okay, uh, so here on the right uh, top, it is agriculture drone. Drone also used, uh, has been used many from decades. Like we are keep on researching on like how we can enhance the agriculture system or agriculture, uh, the production uh, by using drones and all because it is more effective as comparable to manual uh, spraying pesticides and all. And these are the, some uh, military drones, uh, which is for uh, used for military purpose, which are known as tactical combat, so used for surveillance, surveillance or uh, for attacking enemy. And this is uh, one more drone, which is SenseFly EB Plus, uh, which is uh, also used for uh, survey, surveillance, taking feed data or taking data of anywhere else. So you can be uh, like uh, some people are using this also as surveillance purpose. So these are now we move to multi aerodynamics. So just uh, I actually uh, I recommend that uh, you take screenshots from now from this slide. Take screenshots, like because if you will not take screenshot, then you might uh, uh, happens like prone to uh, forget everything uh, for some of the uh, concepts. And multi aerodynamics is uh, just I'm I will try to make it simple, very much simple, so that everyone can understand. First force, uh, first force which uh, comes in drones is lift. Lift is like uh, this, the word itself uh, signifies that what something which uh, lifts, like the force which lifts something. So lift is a general English word which could, uh, you can know the meaning lift. That means lifting something. So the force that directly opposes the weight of an airplane and holds the airplane in the air. So uh, actually, some of you or some of, uh, like basically children. Like fascinates at how the airplanes uh, or how airplane or a drone can be in air without any support. It's just because of lift. It counters the weight. It uh, uh, like uh, it, or it is uh, more than the weight so that the drone can fly or hover at a particular place. So simple as simple as that. Lift, which is generated by all the four motors with the help of propeller. Prope without propeller, the motor it, uh, itself can't uh, produce lift. Only propeller with the propeller uh, at a particular RPM when it is rotating. So it will generate lift. You, here you could say F1, F2, F3, and F4. These are the four lifts, four forces, which are generated by the four propellers or four motors with propellers. So uh, uh, spinning at RPM. So the force that propels a flying machine, thrust, uh, thrust what, what we call is thrust, the force that propels a flying machine in the direction of motion. So the direction of motion of this drone, uh, for the drone of the quadcopter, would be in upward direction. So what is thrust? Thrust is nothing, which is it's just a force which is generated by the propeller, and lift is the force which is generated by the air flow, which is moving down, like uh, moving down uh, over the propeller. 
so that is generating uh, lift and thrust which is generated by the propeller like uh, you could say that when you are pushing the table you are uh, applying force that force is called thrust as simple as that so you uh, the propeller are pushing the drone like it's pulling or not pushing it's pulling pulling drone upward so the pull force that pull force we call this thrust force as simple as that ascending and descending there are two param uh, motions ascending and descending ascending means the drone which is going up and descending which is going down like when you increase the throttle the drone will climb climb uh, like uh, the drone is still on the ground and it's moving up so that is called ascending and when it's moving down then it is called descending so when it is moving up the four forces must be greater than the uh, the weight the weight of the drone mg and uh, well while hover like when it is hovering like at particular position when it is hovering the thrust which is the thrust sorry the lift force 4 into f the all the four lift forces should be equal to weight and um, when descending like when it is landing so it will be the th like the total lift force 4 into f 4 into f means the all the four uh, lift produced by all uh, like all the four motors all the four motors so like uh, f1 plus f2 plus f3 plus f4 so it will be 4 into uh, f kind of so less than should be less than mg it will less than mg okay so here uh, you could say some one picture which demonstrate uh, lift force this is lift force this is the thrust force lift force always acts at the like the summation of all the force will act at the center which is counter to weight and the thrust force which are uh, act at uh, respective propellers like respective motors and here you could say when it is tilting when a drone tilts then the partial amount of lift will generate horizontal thrust and the partial amount of uh, total lift that the total lift uh, only a portion of total lift will uh, contribute to uh, the lift which will counter the weight and the uh, and the portion of the lift will go in horizontal thrust when the drone is tilted at a particular position now what if drones like uh, tilted uh, by uh, either by wind or because of control in control in force so it happens this only now some five basic movements uh, which you should know uh, as some of you may have uh, may don't know some of uh, are here are beginners also so one motion is ascend uh, drone moving upward and second motion is descent drone moving down what pitch drone tilting towards forward and pitch backward like the drone tilting backward roll drone tilting side by side your drone rotating around the vertical axis so i will demonstrate with this how what does the ascend and descend mean so this you, here you could say the red stick this red stick when it is when you will increase the throttle the drone will ascend when you will decrease the throttle the drone will descend okay here uh, the right uh, stick the right stick when you will move up the drone will move pitch the tilt forward and pitch forward and when you till when you will uh, drag the stick towards backward then the pitch will the, the drone will tilt backward the pitch is backward roll what is roll this is roll like tilting drone side by side tilting drone right toward right when you will move the stick right the drone will tilt right when you will stick move towards left then drone drone will tilt towards left so there is uh, no such confusion it's a simple motion of the drone uh okay your what is your this is your so when you will move left and right the stick the stick which is uh, you are increasing the throttle so when you will move left and right the drone will uh, when you will move right the drone will rotate in clockwise direction when you will move towards left the drone will rotate in anti clockwise direction here what happens like you uh, you must uh, have confusion like how it is happening how the throttle is increasing how the throttle is decreasing how the pitch is move control what is pitch control what is roll control what is happening like how the drone is moving forward how the drone is moving backward how the drone is rolling towards right side left side and how the your motion is happening simple as that ke uh, like uh, the drone you could see the throttle control one the green uh, like the green uh, arrow signifies the uh, motor is rotating at uh, less rpm like slow the motor is rotating slow the rpm is less and here you uh, have red uh, red color you could say that the rpm of the motor is high so when moving down the rpm is less and moving up all the four motors is running uh, running at its high rpm and when pitch control 
when it is moving forward the forward two motor that that is the one motor and the second motor will uh, rotate at high rpm and the and the other two motor will rotate at low rpm so the uh, like the drone will move at forward motion i am i am repeating please take screenshot otherwise if they might have you might happen to uh, forget this thing so please uh, take uh, take the uh, screenshot so that you can take as a reference afterwards every slide don't miss any of the slide because every slide is having information so this is the moving forward drone and here uh, the drone is moving backward and roll control for road control the like when you will move towards left here the drone is facing towards here uh, like uh, in this direction you could say my arrow so this is the drone facing towards this direction so for this uh, left is this one so uh, when it will bend left then the rpm of the motor will increase the left rpm the left motors uh, as seen from the front will be uh, rotate faster like rpm will be more and it will be less uh, as same as that right for right and your control now comes for your control it's a, a tricky one it's a just uh, like uh, understand that when it will rotate left that is when you will see in this direction in this direction uh, like uh, from to uh, like when you are you are standing at where it is written your control yeah you can see that your control when when you are standing here and you will see the drone yeah the drone uh, what you will see from here it will be backward position and here rotate left where it is written it's a forward position so from there uh, when you will see so when you will move the stick left oh shit. so the drone will rotate left okay how it is happening here you could say the first motor this one and the second motor this one, uh, this one okay so when you will um, give command to rotate left the rpm of second motor which is rotating in anti clockwise di direction and the rpm of the fourth motor which is rotating in anti clockwise direction it's rotating in anti clockwise direction remember so it will increase okay so when it will increase you should know like you should say like the drone will rotate in clockwise direction no uh, sorry anti clockwise direction but no uh, the drone will rotate in clockwise direction why because you must have also question like yeah it is uh, the motor which is rotating in clockwise direction that first and the third one is slow why the drone will rotate in clockwise direction the simple answer is that uh, because of conservation of angular momentum anything which rotates or fly the, uh, take it as a drone so there are uh, rotating components one two three four four rot uh, motor is rotating with with propeller so to make it stable to uh, to have a stable flight uh because uh like it should have uh, the angle angular momentum of this motor should have conserved like that i know there is there should be no external torque uh so that it shouldn't rotate in uh, in one direction only it should have stable flight like it should be fly uh, at a stable position so to counter that to counter uh, like uh, the motor is generating more and more here the high rpm motor is generating more and more external torque which is in anti clockwise direction so the drone will itself uh, conserve the angular momentum and it will uh, rotate in clockwise direction so to conserve the angular momentum the drone is rotating in clockwise direction okay now same goes for the right, uh, rotating right okay so, uh, just remember to conserve angular momentum that's why the drone is rotating in clockwise direction uh, when the anti clockwise motors are rotating in high rpm for rotating left and uh, the vice versa like the opposite go, goes for rotating right simple as that this uh, video will do, uh, demonstrate the function that how in real life how the drone flies so this is ascend uh, okay this is ascend this is hover this is hovering and this is roll uh, rolling towards left and ro rolling towards right this is pitching forward this is pitching backward the drone is pitching backward now you will see like uh, this is pitching back forward and uh, this uh, now you will see the, the how drone yaws like how it yaws so here it is yawing in clockwise direction okay now we'll go for translational lift it's a uh, uh, like uh, take screenshot of this also 
uh, i will try to make it simple translation lift lift is you sure that uh, like it's a weight it's a lift which is uh, in vertical direction opposite to weight which something uh, supports which something lift like uh, it uh, it is lifting the drone it's lifting our drone so what is translational lift translational means uh, in a horizontal direction so what is translational lift as simple as that as we know that multi helicopter and multi rotors can hover at a particular place as you know so also they also share a strange aerodynamics what is that uh, uh, some might say that the lift generation in vertical direction is more efficient but no the lift generation in horizontal direction is more the portion of the lift which is generated in horizontal direction which we you saw at uh, when we start when we started the uh, multi rotor aerodynamics the slide which is uh, which uh, shows the multi rotor aerodynamics in that you saw that uh, the some portion of the lift when the drone is tilting at a particular angle the some portion of the lift is converted into horizontal lift that horizontal lift is more efficient as comparable to vertical lift how it is happening see in hover what happens is like the air is flow like here the here you could say that this arrow is the flow of air which is moving downward and the drone is moving uh, like or tries to maintain at a particular position so it tries very much hard to uh, like maintain that same position you could say uh, example like a rope is moving downward and a monkey wants to be at same place so what does the monkey have to do like he have to climb a certain amount to be at same place and he, uh, the energy which is required to required by the monkey to stay at that position when the rope is moving downward like its rope is not uh, fixed or it is not still the rope is also moving downward but he, the monkey wants to be at same place so he have to climb at particular positions so that uh, he could be, uh, maintain its position same goes for hovering hover like when drone hovers and what what happens when it moves forward motion like there are difficulty like uh, the drone uses more energy in hover so also you could say example of monkey and rope uh, monkey uses more energy to be at same place but what happens when uh, it have to be at uh, moving forward motion so uh, the air flow will bend in horizontal motion you could see that the air is bending in horizontal motion how it happens like uh, take an example of monkey and rope so rope is moving downward a monkey is there and uh, there are several rope which is in front of uh, every rope like in series in series there are several rope which is in series okay uh, so what monkey have to do like he don't have to rely on uh, that or rope only he just will jump to another rope and jump to another rope and jump to another rope and he can climb with less energy uh so by jumping forward and forward or you could say if he want to maintain at the same position he will go for another rope it will not uh, be at same rope so he, he don't have to like keep on climbing 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 to maintain at same position he ha just have to jump to another rope same goes for drone so this increased in lift so what happens is like when the uh, lift the portion of lift which is shifted towards horizontal motion the lift increases like there is also horizontal motion and all there is also more, uh, lift which is opposing the weight so this increases the lift and this increase in lift with horizontal motion is translation simple as that and this will help in uh, climb like uh, when you will try to hover the drone or when you will try to move for in forward motion so when you will fly you will feel this this translation lift and this hover concept you will feel at that position so it, it's important to know uh, this concept okay and see here some uh, more concept like this is the very crucial part or you could say very dangerous thing in drone and multi rotors if you will not if will not if you will not know this like if vortex ring state if you will not know the concept of what is ring state uh, like you might uh, prone to crash your drone like the drone you, you will lose the control and you will crash the drone because some many of the people don't know this vortex ring state and they might face crash of the drone and they think like yeah it might happen of the battery but no it's it's just because of what existed because when they crash the drone and when they check the battery it seems to be okay then they can't understand what is what happens to like it uh, the, your drone has crashed so this uh, this is the vortex being said it's a very illusion thing you can't see from naked eye i will show this uh, from this video it's a real life video and you, you, you will understand by seeing the video what is the vortex ring state first of all understand how it happens 
it happens like where here you could say the air is moving uh, the flow downward flow of the air uh, over the propeller uh, so there are some part of where air also which move towards upward upward sideways so due to this upward motion and uh, downward motion of air it forms there uh, a circle form like a uh, helical circle you could say vortex when you will uh, like uh, yeah, when you will rotate your bottle uh, by having a water in it so it will form a vortex same as that vortex will uh, seen in the air because both are fluid generally generally in mechanic mechanical what we say is fluid so what happens is the relative motion of the uh, air flow like the air flow moving downward and the motion which is moving upward air flow moving upward that will cause a ring ring kind of thing and it will appear at the tip of the propeller in hover it is less because of low like less motion of air flow towards upward direction less there are less air which is flowing in upward direction in, in hover but in descent what happens is like the drone is moving downward the rpm is getting lower and lower and lower so the air flow which is moving from upward upward is getting lower and lower and the air which is uh, moving uh, like sorry 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 the air which is moving in downward is getting lower and lower and the air which is moving upward upward in direction upward direction above like uh, from down to up and the air flow which is moving from down to like up up to down so when rpm goes less the air which is moving from up to down goes less and the air which is moving from down to up increases so what happens is due to this relative motion the ring formation starts increasing 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 and it reduces the amount of lift generated by the propeller lift what we say na like uh, what i have discussed before lift which is carrying the drone so that will decrease because of this uh, effect this uh, ring formation there are one word also downwash downwash means like uh, eliminating the lift downwash is eliminating the lift eliminating the lift means making the lift zero okay so this is this happens in descent and this is the more and in happens it's uh, more most of the drones most of the flyer crashes their drone during descent only because they don't understand how to recover it and they crashes their drone so see this video and i will also uh, say uh, like make you understand how to recover from this so actually uh, uh, the aerodynamics which is shared by the i, I discussed like i told you before the aer aerodynamics which is just, uh, shared by the helicopters which is also a rotor wing and the aerodynamics which is shared by the drones which is multi rotors is same is there is no difference between both because both are having rotor wings okay uh, see this is the vortex ring state which is happening in rotor wing and it's a most dangerous thing uh, and pilot or flyer should have to know about this otherwise they will crash the uh, uh, flight aircraft or helicopter or drone so here uh, you could say that the aircraft uh, like the helicopter is tilted at a particular angle and it is moving towards side by side here the recovery completed so as soon as the drone or rotor like the rotor of the drone or helicopter reaches at the upwind part of the vortex like here this one this part this one so as soon as the rotor reaches at that position this uh, you could see here the circle circle here you could see a circle so when the rotor reaches at this position by tilting the uh, helicopter or the drone so it will uh, rec the recovery will complete so when you uh, so remember just simple in a simple line that when uh, you are landing the drone like while landing the drone don't you have you don't have to remember while flying like hover or flying in uh, up space but when you are landing your drone re remember just not to land straight forward like straight downward so vortex ring will increase and you may prone to crash your drone and you will think uh, it might happen because of battery no it's it's not the battery it's the uh, vortex ring state it's a devil thing it will crash your drone and it will damage the part so it's a devil uh, so you have to recover this devil so what happens is like you have to tilt your rotor or you tilt the drone uh, at a particular angle either sideways or forward position and then moving forward or moving side uh, sideways 
and in that ways you have to land that zone you don't uh, don't just go like straight downward just go a little uh, like make a tilt a, a particular angle your drone or a uh, like in sideways section or forward motion and land the drone and uh, so this will prevent from crash this is the simple thing now comes drone essentials uh drone essentials straight the screenshot, screenshot of this uh, because this is the major thing which you which you will use building the drone first things first and first things comes transmitter and receiver which fly sky there are two companies generally available in india fly sky and patuba but fly sky is uh, generally available in market store also electronic store which you uh, like uh, when you will get to any other uh, any of the electronic store uh, so a fly sky they will sell fly sky but you will buy when you will buy online uh, then you can buy both of them uh, you, as your per, as per your choice if you will if you want to invest more money then go over fatuba if you if you want to like manage in less uh, so you uh, select fly sky only difference is that if you want to go for higher money like higher features uh, transmitter uh, if you invest money in transmitter then go for fatuba if you want to just uh, like want the transmitter to fly only don't having uh, like you don't have to have uh, the more features and all so go for fly sky second comes frame frame like uh, which you will uh, like mount the motors and all frame for frame of the drone second and the third comes flight controller plus covering like flight controller it's, it's all uh, like it's a, a covering which covers the flight like box which is inside the flight controller is inside that box so flight controller plus uh, covering and this, there are some flight controllers available in the market which is kk board which i will be dealing in this workshop nasa nasa is a dji company you have uh, heard about dji company which build drones so it, nasa is the flight controller of that of that company it's a uh, uh, like uh, indigenous kind of indigenous uh, flight controller for uh, dji nasa cc3d open pilot is a uh, one more flight controller which are generally used for uh, uh, racing drones and all okay and uh, fourth one is naze 32 naze 32 uh, is also a flight controller apm auto pilot PX, uh, px4 pixoc these two are autopilot and in vtol when you saw at starting we are using PIXOC, PX4, PIXOC. It's a, uh, like, uh, you could say the top level fl uh, flight controller. It's uh, below that, th this nine, uh, you could say here, several names, KK board, NASA, these all are below PIXOC, PX4, PIXOC. PIXOC is the most superior one. Okay, and so PX4, PIXOC, uh, it is having a multi uh, functions, multi-task function, and also it's a autopilot one. Uh, second and fourth is power distribution board. It will distribute uh, like uh, equal power to all all the four motor. If you are you flying quadcopter from the battery, from the battery to motor, the power distribution will be equal. So that's why we use power distribution mode. Lipo battery, uh, which will XT60 connector, JST wire, uh, ESC BLDC uh, proper uh, BLDC motor. Yeah, ESC is electronic speed controller, which will uh, control motor. Uh, I will be discussing later. Uh, propeller USB SP programmer, which you will be used for programming KK board, jumper uh, jumper wire, servo uh, wire extension, lipo battery charger, lipo battery tester, and servo tester. These are tools required. You could say here on the right side, which is important tools you should have in hand to like fly the drone. You can omit dex light and magnifier. Uh, it's just like if you want to work comfortably. So uh, omit dex, li uh, dex light and magnifier. You don't have to buy this. If you want to work comfortably, uh, there is a problem in like problem to you see things and all. So you could uh, go for dex light and magnifier. These are this is transmitter. Now we move to transmitter. There are several types of transmitter. Four channel transmitter. You could say here four CH, six CH, eight CH, ten CH. These are channel. Like four channel transmitter, six channel transmitter, eight channel transmitter, ten channel transmitter. What does this channel means? Channel means like four channel. That means the four function of the any flying object or any uh, robots you can control four function. Okay, four pins uh, will be there in the receiver. You will connect the wires in the four pins and you will con you can control it. Six channel means you can control six function at a time. Okay, 
uh, eight channel means you can control eight function of the aircraft or eight function of the drone and all. Ten channel means you could uh, you could control ten channels of the drones and aircrafts. Generally, we go for four channel because six channel, eight channel, and ten channel is for uh, advanced. Like if you go, if you want to do adv uh, things which is beyond the basics thing, like the beginner. And we will dealing with here. Here we are dealing with basics. It's a beginning part of the making drone. It's the most basic part of the making drone. If you want to go above, you will go for above channel, like six channel, eight channel, ten channel. And the frequency uh, for this, all the transmitter, whether it is for tuba, which is this fly sky frequency, which is which works, is uh, 2.4 gigahertz for uh, receiver and transmitter. Now for fly sky, there are one like specialty of fly sky, and uh, I prefer fly sky because uh, one term is there AFHDS 2A. What does this mean? Automatic frequency hopping digital system, second generation. Second generation is the more, uh, late, latest version. So AF is, AFHDS is automatic frequency hopping digital system. What does this mean? Like at a time you can connect three receiver from one transmitter. Like you can control three aircraft at a with uh, like one transmitter. So or you could say that you can hop from uh, uh, like one uh, one receiver to another receiver at a time. You understanding like uh, if uh, there are two receiver, then you can uh, hop from one receiver to another receiver. As simple as that. Don't go in depth because some of them will uh, will not understand. It's just simple as that. AF HDS means hopping, hopping of uh, like uh, because the frequency bandwidth is uh, you could say that 2.0055 from 2.4 2.4055 to 2.475 gigahertz this is the bandwidth of the frequency so here you could say multi channel hopping frequency that is uh, within this bandwidth there are uh, around 32 channels so uh, for example there are there is a receiver of uh, eight channel so you could use uh, within um, like between this 32 you could use two uh, receiver or eight like uh, uh, you could uh, you could say that four receiver at a time kind of thing now, as it's, it's just example so you could uh, control like that bi-directional communication so at a time it can receive and send at, uh, at simultaneously like uh, uh, it can receive and send simultaneously the receiver also can receive and send simultaneously omnidirection gain antenna so uh, the antenna gain is omnidirection and uh, unique id recognition system some of the transmitter when you will buy like chinese one so they will don't they will not have unique ID recognition system, but FlySky is having and Fatuba is also having. Unique ID recognition system means like when you will flying, you will uh, some may say that uh, you could interrupt with another receiver and you can, like there is an, uh, interference of the uh, communication. But no, with this receiver and transmitter, you will not have inter interference because it is having a unique ID recognition system. Okay, uh, just remember. Sir. These are the frames which is available, and we will dealing in this workshop with F450. This is a uh, hexacopter, and this is Martian 3 Reptile 260 mm quadcopter frame kit. This is for racing drone. Some uh, some might know, like might have uh, be, like might have to build drone which is for racing purpose. So you we can use this. Okay, and this is the drone which is uh, you can make home homemade drone. This is the drone which is homemade drone like frame sorry frame of the drone which is homemade okay and these are the frames generally available in the market uh f f450 is the most standard one for quadcopter like if you want to build a drone if you want to learn how to build a drone you can buy this f450 it's cheap and it's available everywhere in the market either in offline like in store or uh, online so go for it and buy and now comes for flight controller DJI NASA. Uh, like you might think, like why this wiring connection I showed you? Because some of them might have fascination of DJI. So you could use, you could buy this trans, uh, flight controller DJI NASA Lite. And here you could see here one link is there. Uh, just take a snap of this, or you could just uh, like uh, take a snap and uh, like. Uh, so you can go on DJI website and uh, go and um, NASA M Lite and download the doc, which will be available for uh, configuration and 
uh, set up for this flight control i will be not explaining further because it will consume time so moving forward because it's a uh, and remember dji nasa is very good for videography so very good in sense because the dji nasa uh, like dji is most popular for videography so there are uh, proprietary of uh, aerial photography so dji nasa like you can buy and you can take a screenshot of this and connection is same as that like you can buy this stuff and you can connect and you can fly the drone by using dji nasa like so this is kk board what we will be dealing in um, this workshop uh, the left one is blackboard which is older version of kk board now it's not available in the market it is very less available in the market so when you will go and buy you will not have this you will have this this lcd one so what happens is i'm uh, i'm telling you some of the components which will be this one uh, wait, huh, this one here here uh, for blackboard i'm explaining for blackboard there uh, like the left one is potentiometer which will for uh, like you will use for uh, uh, calibrating gyro gyro is a sensor and uh, accelerometer is also a uh, sensor and both of the sensor is available in this board all the flight control board not in this board all the flight control board and this direction uh, is a direction which is uh, is the direction of the flight like uh, the forward motion of the flight uh, will be the board will should direct in that way that this direction should be in the forward uh, part of the like the front part so what is the the front part the uh, like the drone the front part of the drone so it should face at that uh, the arrow should face in that direction okay these are the some gyro sensors okay which is a single axis gyro uh, for roll pitch and yaw okay this is the microprocessor and here you could say isp header which is used for programming this board using usb asp programmer okay and here you could say uh, there are several pins m1 m2 m3 and m4 m1 m2 m3 much, uh, like means uh like you you will connect uh, motors here like motor 1 motor 2 motor 3 motor 4 motor 5 motor 6 the newer version i will shift to most newer version because it's the base of the workshop newer version is having a lcd here the, you could say four buttons back up down enter remember this button uh, and it will display on the lcd but remember it like uh it will be easy to you so here here this one this one uh, it's a microchip you could see here chip this is invensense six axis six axis accelerometer gyros or uh, our gyro sensor so inbuilt their accelerometer sensor and gyro sensor is inbuilt in this microprocessor chip so in when uh, since six axis uh, is a sensor uh, this one and uh, here you could say there are single axis in blackboard but here it is uh, <coughs> like uh, all the six axis is in inbuilt in this microprocessor chip this is 80 mega i am like 80 ml uh, mlel 648448 processor for this fly, uh, flight uh, flight controller and uh, here you could say polarity protected voltage sensor input this is input voltage which, which we will display from like the battery voltage if you want to display the voltage of the battery on uh, like on the screen or if you, if you want to feed the data of the uh, battery voltage you have to have connect the gst wire what we discuss later gst wire i will uh, show you what is uh, how it looks the gst wire how it looks so this is polarity protected uh, voltage sensor so polarity protected means uh, you should uh, like you don't have to uh, like worry about polarity but remember to connect it in the right way here on the board it will write like which is positive which is negative so connect positive to positive negative to negative that is positive is red wire negative is black wire okay positive is black or red wire remember from now onwards for connection uh, and in also assembly and connection i will uh, tell you like how to connect but remember when while connecting any of the wire in any of the motors or any of the flight control any of the devices you just have to remember the polarity or, it, or otherwise you will damage the part the polarity the positive to positive negative to negative okay here you could say fuse protected piezo output piezo output this means buzzer the buzzer alarm which will get for a flight controller you will connect here okay and I, I will show you like how to connect it this is lcd display uh, this is isp header here one this one so this is isp header means like you will connect the usb asp programmer to this port and you will program the board 
I will show you how to connect it and how to configure it. And these are the some uh, like uh, aileron, elevator, throttle, rudder, uh, rudder and aux, auxiliary port, which we call aux, extra port for uh, having a, fun, a function of uh, some something like which uh, you want to control it. Aileron, what is aileron? Uh, I have not discussed you before. What is aileron? You you are like uh, you are uh, you are not understanding that why it is written here and uh, aileron. Ailerons means like the pitch control. Sorry, sorry, roll roll control. Ailerons means roll control. Roll control that is moving from uh, right to left. Okay, ailerons means uh, moving right left, tilting right side to side. That is rolling. Roll one. Elevator means pitching, pitching up forward and pitching backward. So the connection which we will do with receiver here, uh, this aileron, elevator, throttle, rudder. Here, the, here we connect receiver like the channel number one, channel number two, channel number three, channel number four. Four channel, now four function. You have to control four function: aileron, elevator, which is pitch, uh, throttle, which is just the throttle, which is increasing and decreasing the RPM, and rudder. Rudder means your your function of the drone. So rudder, you will connect the receiver uh, according to this. Channel number one will go to aileron. Channel number two will go to elevator. Channel number three will go to throttle, throttle, and channel number four will go for rudder. Remember this while connecting uh, to receiver and uh, flight controller board. Here M1, M2, M3, M4, M5, M6, M7, M8. Here eight motors you can connect. Motor one, motor two, motor three, motor four, motor five. Motor six, motor seven, motor eight. Okay, this is the flight control board KK 2.1.5 flight control. So this is all about uh, flight controller board. Uh, okay, let's go now. This is CC3D Open Pilot. Okay, here you could say the white one is a uh, connection for receiver. Here pin, which is uh, vertically facing upward, is for motor. Same for uh, same goes for this also motor one, motor two, motor three, motor four. Here you could say the some other functions are available in this other than receiver connection and motor. There are also two port. Which is um, here one. This one is main port. You could say here main port. Here you could say flexi port. Okay, and here uh, this one, the bottom portion. You could say here like the USB kind of thing is there. This is micro USB connection. So the USB uh, like uh, for programming the KK 2.1.5, you are you have to have a USB ASP uh, programmer but for this you don't have to have like I, I have told you before uh, starting the workshop that for configuring CC3D you don't have to have a uh, setup part by part and you have to configure it you just can uh, connect micro USB cable which is available in general store in market the uh, one which is used for charging camera and all so connect this and connect to computer and just go and open this software and you will go for it I will discuss also like how to do what is this software liberal pilot this is the link for that uh, for downloading the software for configuring uh, configuration like for configuring this board cc3d open pilot okay these are the some flight controllers autopilot pixhawk and we can use Arduino also to make it as a flight controller by programming uh, like i'm not dealing with this in this workshop because it's it will take too lengthy so because uh, you need to have connection you do need to dump the program by uh, using Arduino IDE uh, and also uh, like uh, making you understand the programming stuff it's like huge pro it's a, a four page program if you write in a A4 sheet you will print the program in a A4 sheet uh, what the program which is I am having if you if you will print the program in a A4 sheet it will come in five pages okay so it will come in five pages so uh, we are not discussing in this workshop like uh, if you want to know, then you can contact us on uh, our number and email ID, which I will be show. Like you will uh, be seen at the last of the slide. This is NACE 32 is also a flight, a flight controller which is available in the market. So don't be confused. Just uh, like choose two flight controller, one for uh, the standard one, which is you will uh, like the standard one means like for other purpose for if you want to uh, like photography for our stable flight hover and all. So choose if you want to uh, apply octocopter. Choose only to uh, make make uh, two flight controller as a standard one, like the one for racing, uh, like the in uh, CC3D Open Pilot, which I have done, like our club has done. Uh, NACE uh, or CC3D Open Pilot has chosen has chosen for uh, like racing drone because it's the most basic and the configuration is very easy. I will show, uh, like I will discuss uh, how to how it's like how to configure that board, and also KK 2.1.5 multicopter. 
why we use that because uh, it's having a lcd display and also it can go up to eight motors so we have choose two uh, like standard flight controller which we will be using making drones and all so there are several other flight controllers just remember make two flight controller one for if you want to do race then select cc3d open pilot and if you want to do other stuffs other uh, major stuffs like um, for um, having videography or having any other stuff so select kk 2.1.5 so these are the other essentials this is power distributions board here you could say at left corner is a power distribution board at amazon this wire one here you could say this one is available at amazon but generally people prefer this one like uh, to have because here you could say there are connection of 5 volt also like there is inbuilt battery aluminator circuit because the battery you are uh, selecting is 11.1 volt like almost 12 volt mm -hmm. so when you will connect like for example other stuff like gps or uh, camera if you want to install camera that will uh, like um, that will damage that uh, camera or that will damage that gps that gps uh, because the 12 volt is too much for uh, camera camera which is working for 5 volt there are also camera which is which will which can work at 12 volt so remember that just see the specification of the camera if you are installing the camera in the like uh, like drone i will also discuss how to install that camera in the uh, like um, uh, drone so these are some connections uh, like xt60 connector uh, plug uh, like which will connect the power distribution board to battery there are some extension wires so you can buy this and also this one is xt60 uh, connector with gst what i was talking gst wire is this only here you can see the small wire like small connector uh, red color connector it's a gst wire so for having input voltage of battery you will connect this only to kk 2.1.5 what i saw like uh, why i told you before uh, before uh, like uh, where where we will get the input voltage of the battery like the, if you want to the if you want to get uh, the input voltage of the like information of the voltage uh, like, of the battery so you have to have this gst wire and this connector is connected to the battery and the power distribution board this is esc 30 ampere esc now uh, like uh, and this is battery so here what is uh, like this is capacity of the battery like the mah what is written 1500 mah it's a capacity of the battery and here you could say that uh, like 50 to 100 c c means c rating that is the continuous discharge rating of the battery i will discuss later what is continuous discharge rating of the battery and this is uh, like uh, you could say here 4s 3s here it is written 4s so it's a cell count cell count uh, like means 4s means four cell s is you you don't like s is the acronym of any scientific num, name so <clears throat> remember four cell or three s if it is written three s then it's three cell, three cell battery if it is written two s then it's a two cell battery okay this is main lead <coughs> and this is balance lead balance lead means that you will connect this lead to charger like lipo battery charger and you will charge the battery so this is balance lead this is main lead this is capacity of the battery lipo battery c rating and cell count now some might have question that why you we are using lipo battery and why we why, why we are not using leon battery lithium ion battery and why you are using lithium polymer battery and uh, lipo battery means lithium polymer battery just because uh, lipo battery can be designed at any capacity as per requirement and it having a freedom of uh, shape and size but leon batteries can be designed only a particular uh like a particular uh, amount of capacity it can't it can't go beyond like if you want to design for thirty thousand mah battery thirty thousand is very much so you can design lipo battery but you can like the company you, you don't have to design the company will design so it it is having difficult the battery the design of the leon battery of of thirty thousand mah will be very huge so like it's 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 not practical so, but the lipo battery design like uh, for designing like making or building lipo battery for 30000 mh is uh, like more or less comfortable for the company so this is the reason and in rc because of its lightweight compact size and uh, higher capacity uh, like compact size and higher capacity both 
because uh, lipo battery comes with higher capacity with small uh, with also small sizes and uh, like comfortable sizes for rc rc means remote control uh, drones and all anything so how to, how do we select bat uh, like battery selection i will uh, like discuss later how we select batteries so battery selection depends on these four only mh volts c rating and cells esc selection remember two things take a screenshot or write it in a copy it depends on the maximum current drawn by motor maximum current drawn by motor uh, it will i will show you how what the, what does this mean maximum maximum current drawn by the motor the ampere rating should be two times of that the maximum current drawn by the motor ampere rating means that's this 30 ampere 30 ampere is the ampere rating of the esc so if you are buying or you uh, if you are going to electronic shop and you the, you you have to have like you have to buy the esc so tell them ampere rating of the esc like i want 30 ampere esc or i want 40 ampere esc so ampere rating will be two times of the maximum current maximum current drawn by motors second point is it gets cut off at 3.3 volts of each cell like uh, it's a autonomous uh, thing uh, like when you when the battery will discharge a particular cell of the battery i'm here 3.3 volt is the uh, like uh, voltage of the particular cell inside the, like if this battery is of four cell then a single cell is carrying uh, around 3.7 because it's 11.1 volt uh, 40.8 volt for its battery so uh, the single cell will have 3.7 volt minimum so uh, so for that uh, the discharge uh, uh, voltage for the single cell is 3.3 volt so at that volt the esc will get cut off it's just a information don't worry about it uh, you we will get to know later so uh, while selecting e uh, esc remember only first point like depend on maximum current drawn by the motor and the ampere ampere rating is two times of the maximum current drawn by the motor <coughs> that is if 15 ampere is the maximum current drawn by the motor so the esc will be ampere rating of the esc will be 30 as simple as that okay now comes uh, the so like theory part just a little part mh part mh is of uh, the battery is you have to know because uh, when you are selecting battery selecting battery then you have to know what is mh what is volts and what is c rating because if you don't know then you can't select the battery as per Uh, as per like your own requirement i will tell you like what is the battery of what you have to select what is the standard battery but based on your requirement you have to select your battery so mh is is a measure of measure of total energy that the battery can deliver between full charge to fully discharged states that is mh okay more would like if you if you go for higher mh higher mh means milliamps r Uh, mh is a uh, full form of milli, like acronym of uh, milliamps r so if you will go for higher mh like 20000 mh or 10000 mh then the hover time will increase as uh, hover time will increase so but uh, there is also one disadvantage on in going higher mh is like the battery weight the weight of the battery will increase so remember what is your requirement your requirement is hover or a uh, like uh, stable flight like if you want to fly fast then you should go for low mh because the weight will be less if you want to hover like if you want to take a drone shot uh, stable drone shot uh, in a videography kind of thing so uh, with more hover time like 30 minutes hover time or 20 minutes hover time then go for higher mh battery so you will have to select also uh, that kind of uh, like uh, depending on weight you have to go and select so i will discuss later how to select battery Uh, but just i am uh, making you understand what does mh means volts volts is the nominal voltage of each cell like volts what we uh, what what it is written on the battery it's like for example 11.1 volt three cell battery three cell battery means 3s what is uh, the, the like lipo battery comes in packs of cells so 2s means two cell 3s means three cell 4s means four cells and 6s means six cells so for 3s battery and voltage voltage is 11.1 volt so each cell will have 3.7 volt okay and uh, so this is the nominal voltage of lipo battery but it can fully charge to 4.2 volts above that it will dam like if you will charge above 4.2 volts then your battery will get damaged and i will also tell like how to 
select the battery charger so that you uh, prevent from overcharging overcharging the battery now comes c rating c rating is how fast the battery loses its energy like can deliver its energy kind of thing or how fast the battery can be discharged it's the c rating so a one c rating like the lower c rating battery will discharge very uh, slowly slowly so one c rating battery it's a, a stand like a reference system or you could say that reference battery one c ba actually it's not available it's just a theoretical uh, concept that one c battery can empty itself in one hour uh, one c battery is not available in the market it just for reference uh, for deciding uh, you could say that rating of the battery a one c battery can empty itself in one hour how it is happening like how the battery of one c rating is can be in, uh, can empty itself in one hour so battery with an extremely low discharge so remember it's a low rating one c is a very much less rating a c rating of the battery so remember this point a battery with with an extremely low discharge rating often result in under performance the, like with less c rating you will get a uh, slow discharge like the discharge of the battery will be a uh, little, little bit slow like one c rating is uh, discharging in one hour so but the performance will be very under performance it will it will uh, not uh, like capable of uh, delivering power at a rate like a rate or that is speed kind of thing the power delivering speed of the battery will be less so motor of the drone will not acquire that much power to work uh, properly so it will reduce the performance so what does this continuous discharge means like how wh what is one c rating so when you will devise mah milliamps are matlab like it's a milli uh, kind of thing so you have to divide 1000 to have say, to have a unit of amp ampere r so divide it 1000 for example and uh, multiply by c rate which is written on the battery that is continuous discharge amperage you will get that is continuous discharge ampere you, you will get so 1600 mAh I'm using, if I'm selecting 1600 mAh battery, then divided by 1000, then multiply by 10 and you will get 16 ampere battery. Like 16 ampere is the continuous, uh, continuous current, which will, which will discharge in a time. What is runtime of the safe dis uh, continuous discharge? So divide 60 minutes with C rate. So if it is one C rate, then it will be one hour. Okay. And if, uh, so uh, for, because I have selected here, because i have selected here 60 minutes divided by 10 c so uh, like 60 minutes divided by 10 c that will come to about 6 minutes okay so in 6 minutes the continuous that the 16 ampere the recurrent drawn from the battery is 16 ampere and it is continuously discharging 16 ampere only the ampere is not reducing 16 ampere it is del delivering 16 ampere at a continuous rate so it will discharge itself in six minutes so this is the c rating okay c rating means the continuous discharge rate of the battery so how what is the ampere it will discharge so uh, the the milliamps which is written on the battery divided by thousand multiply by 10 you will get the ampere which with uh, which it will be discharging at a particular time at a continuous rate and what is the time divide 60 minutes by c rate which is written on the battery that you will get the time which is uh, which it will discharge that amount of current uh, at a continuous rate uh, and it will discharge it completely it is a theoretical knowledge but in practical what happens is uh, like you could see here example uh, it's a theoretical knowledge practical i will say uh, it's an example is like 20 uh, for example 25c battery or 35 to 70c battery so uh, you could, uh, the this is a nominal battery which is available in the market like 25 C, so just perform this calculation with 25 C, and you will get the amount of current uh, discharge and amount of runtime. That uh, at, at what time it will discharge completely? Uh, uh, when it is like uh, when it is, uh, for example, 1600 mAh battery, so 1.6 into 25, the amount of current which it will become that continuous uh, uh, flow of the current from the battery at particular time it will uh, like for, for a particular time it will discharge it completely this is a practical knowledge sorry theoretical knowledge this is a theoretical knowledge but in practical what happens is when you will discharge the lipo battery completely it will get damaged it will uh, like it will bubble like the bubbles will come in the battery like it will uh, blow it up and uh, like it 
uh, it will not work uh, pro, uh, like work properly some might happens like it can a uh, heat uh, like the increase the amount of heat dissipated by the battery will be increased so don't discharge like the battery is not discharged completely so remember uh, don't charge it overcharge like charge the battery overcharge and don't discharge the battery completely so effective capacity is only 80% that can be used during flight time it is, so 80% of the battery is only used during flight time so i will tell you like how to uh, make 80% like how to know that your 80% battery has been used during flight time and rest 20% is left in the battery itself so these are the uh, now we come for bldc motor so bldc motor and propeller okay so uh, what is like bldc motor bldc is brushless dc motor and to select a motor and propeller like total thrust uh, that is 4 into thrust of one motor we are using four motors so thrust of one motor multiply by 4 that will be total thrust of that of the quadcopter should be two times of the total weight total weight of the quadcopter size of the frame and application of the drone okay now uh, some of the motors might have uh, like written such kind of thing like a2212/10t what is this what does this mean a is the series 22 is the road stator side 12 is the stator height and 10 is the number of turns and this kv rating 4 1400 kv rating this kv rating which is uh, written on the uh, motor and motor comes uh, as per kv rating like it is available in the market depends on kv rating so 1400 kv rating motor which is rpm per volt that is for one volt the rpm will be 1400 rpm is the kv rating so rpm per volt that is 1400 rpm for one volt so if you are using 11.1 volt battery then multiply 11.1 volt with 1400 so you will get the rpm when the voltage is 11.1 volt okay so this is rpm per volt now there is a thumb rule in selecting motor uh, and this you could say here, right the right side table you could see here uh, right a table so depending on this thumb rule, uh, like we have, uh, I have designed uh, like uh, having an experiment or you could say that uh, uh, like doing research on several other motors and combination of motors and propeller. So uh, like depending on that, uh, this is uh, depending on this uh, thumb rule, I've, like you could select motor and propeller. So low KV motor, uh, low KV rating motor means Low KV rating, uh, rating motor means like uh, 700, 500, 1200, uh, sorry, 500, 200 KV rating motor. Low KV rating motor means the motor will be better uh, swinging a larger prop. Like, likewise, 500 KV motor will be capable of uh, uh, like larger prop, like 14 inch prop. It's a larger prop, propeller. Prop means propeller. So it will rotate larger prop and thus producing high thrust at low RPM. That is. For producing high thrust for rotating larger prop, you need to have larger torque. So low KV motor, low RPM, but higher torque. The torque will be produced by this motor will be high. Uh, th second is high KV rating motor means motor will rotate faster. Like the racing drone uses high KV motor. Okay. So high RPM with small props, it will go from small props. Like you, you have seen the small, small drones which is having small, small props. So the the those drones are using high kv motor rating like 2400 kv motor 2300 k 2800 kv motor 300 kv motor so depends on kv rating motor uh, is available in the market so it will have low thrust and it will generally use for racing drone and uh, take the screenshot of this also of this table and this is the uh, like uh, guideline to select uh, kv motor and propeller so i am making you understand what does this table signify this 750 kV rating motor and 900 kV motor rating. This is the range 750 rating, 750 to 900 kV rating motor. Like in which jitne bhi motors aayenge, that will uh, use prop dia range. The prop diameter of the prop will used by this uh, kV rating kV rating motor will be 12 inch to 10 inch. Okay, with pitch pitch is standard 4. Point. There are several pitch motors like pitch. I will discuss what is pitch. So this pitch is standard 4.5. Take it as a standard and select propeller uh, between this also. If you will select 
for example 750 800 kv uh, uh, like in market you are going and you uh, in uh, in online also you are selecting 800 kv motor and you are selecting any of this two prop or between uh, 10, uh, 10 12 to 10 that is 11 inch prop if you are using 11 inch prop then uh, so between this range any of the motor any of the uh, like uh, propeller will produce the thrust thrust like here i have discussed the total thrust the total thrust that is four four into more thrust of one motor so one motor if you like for example your um, uh, um, for example your uh, um, weight of the total weight of the drone is four kg so so i am audible everybody is listening hello You're audible okay sir uh, so the so for if you if your drone total weight is 4 kg so uh, the thrust i'm required per motor will be 200 gram like 2 kg okay so like 4 into uh, uh, because here i have written that the total thrust should be two times of the total weight so if uh, the total weight of the of your drone is 4 kg so the total tr thrust should be two times like 8 kg thrust you need to have why 8 kg why two times because uh, for have, having hover, like when the drone hovers at a particular position, so it requires more thrust to hover. Uh, I have discussed before also, like why it needs to hover, uh, why it needs more energy, more thrust to hover. So depending, for, because of that, because of a stable hover, uh, we we consider the total thrust to, should be two times of the total weight. So we need 8 kg of uh, total uh, thrust, okay? So 8 kg means like uh, one motor should have 2 kg thrust, okay, 4 to the 8, one or uh, 2 kg thrust. So you will select this motor and you will select between this range. So uh, the range will be same for this only. Uh, like you, uh, some of the, because uh, many of the workshop you have attended, if you have attended or any of the workshop which I, which I have seen, so they don't provide such kind of table and, such, and students have face problem a student will have uh, like might have might face facing problem like what how do we select motor and how do we select propeller if i'm know uh, if i know the thrust the requirement thrust requirement of the motor so you have to go and search data sheet and lots of things you have to do just go don't uh, make it such uh, clumsy things clumsy now refer to this table and you will uh, get the like proper output it uh, this is the experimented uh, experimented uh, table which i have done our team has done in aero modeling club and also bench test which what we call as bench test so this is the bench test uh, which we do which i have done and also uh, the research based on on my research so this is the like the table which uh, you have to refer uh, i have explained you uh, uh, like you uh, like you will understand further also like uh, for for example 250 to 180 gram thrust if you want 250 gram to 8, 180 gram thrust then you will go for high kv rating motor which is 2400 to 2800 and the propeller range is 5 to 4 inch just refer to this and you will uh, have a size. so this is uh, uh, like uh, motor and uh, like the data sheet motor of uh, the, uh, the data sheet of this motor the 82212 slash 10 1400 kv motor so when you will copy same thing in the google Type Google the same thing on the, in Google and you will get the data sheet like right a two two one two slash ten t fourteen hundred kV motor motor uh, data sheet type this in the Google and you will get the data sheet. This is also one data sheet of uh, kV hundred uh, seven hundred kV motor and I was saying the maximum continuous current before for selecting ESC and in this data sheet you could see here maximum continuous current is for twenty seven ampere so the ESC will be two times of this. And here number of cells it will. So remember when you are buying the motor uh, from any website, uh, whether it be Robo.in, whether it be Amazon.in, whether it be Robokits in uh, India, I will show you later. So depending on that, uh, you will uh, like uh, you uh, in that when you will go and select the motor that I have, I want the 700 kV motor. You will when you will go in description part, in description part you will see you you will get the data sheet or you will get some description of the uh, of this motor like max like for example number of cells uh, the like number of cells of the battery required to run this motor like three to four cells maximum continuous current to 27 ampere but these two only you have to see 
and weight weight of the motor like 120 gram only this thing these three things you have to consider in this data sheet and rest and below here you can say some tested bench test performed on this motor like for 12 into 6 volts uh, when when i will vary the volt from 7.4 to 14.8 with ampere drawn will be this uh, power drawn will be this thrust uh, produced by the motor will be this so you could see here for 14.8 volts with 12 into 6 inch propeller 7k kv dt motor uh, ke liye jo uh, like the propeller which is selected is 12.6 for uh, k uh, voltage which is uh, 14.8 volt this is the battery voltage 14.8 volt voltage battery voltage ampere drawn by the motor is 25.2 watts power drawn by the motor is this and thrust produced by the motor is 1980 gram so uh, referring to this data sheet you could select your motor and propeller okay now how to select like how to know what is the size of the propeller so uh, like uh, this is the propeller you will generally see uh, what uh, like uh, the propeller from that table you could see if uh, the for 1400 kv motor the propeller would be 9 in 9 into 4.5 inch or inch Uh, this 9 into 4.5 inch 9 is the diameter of the propeller and 4.5 is the pitch and the size and direction will be written here on the near the this propeller bore near this uh, hub hub of the propeller you could say that this circle kind of thing so where the where you will mount propeller into motor so uh, here it is written size and direction direction whether it is clockwise direction or whether it is counter clockwise propeller okay so there are two sets in one packet one is clockwise other is anti clockwise now select esc i have uh, told you like uh, what is the uh, like ampere what should be the ampere rating okay uh, now comes uh, uh, now the battery is selected as um, mah depending on flying requirement like if you have to hover hover for higher mah you will go for higher mah acro means lower mah effect size and uh, weights of the battery also as i have discussed mah affects the size and the battery weight of the battery cells which is designated as s depending on motor manufacturer suggested which i saw uh, which i like uh, this one here here cells uh, it will be manufacturer uh, recommendation in the motor itself and where you from where you uh, like you will buy the motor so in description it will be there so you have to read the description first of all cells c rating depending on operation and performance for example c uh, if you want to go for higher c rating that means operation means uh, for example um, racing zone so you need to have higher performance so operation is uh, high performance so the quick draw of the power from the battery the higher c rating so if you want to have a stable flight hover and do videography do videography then go for lower rating i mean not too much lower go for 30c 40c okay so this is how we select battery and esc and propeller okay now see what does the pitch means so pitch is the height or distance between first ring and the second ring of the uh, air displaced by the battery this is the uh, battery or oh, sorry propeller propeller air displaced by the propeller one so air displaced by the uh, propeller is like uh, Uh, kind of thing this simulation only the first ring of the uh, like first circle the first uh, circle which the propeller is making and displacing the air the distance how much the air is displaced by this propeller is the pitch 4.5 pitch so distance height this uh, first ring the distance between this first ring and the second ring is 4.5 this is pitch okay now uh, standard battery now oh, i have i have told you how to select battery i have told you how to select esc i have told you how to select propeller i have told you how to select uh, motor now there are several combination like lots of lots of combination but in market or uh, in general store the standard battery or standard for uh, for making several drones also uh, the standard battery watch what uh, normally uh, drone like you know, like uh, uh rc in rc hobby rc hobby which uh, who are building drones and uh, we also like the standard battery what what we use or uh, other rc hobby which is uh, making drone other people which, who are making drone 
they the battery which is standard battery what they are using is 11.1 volt 2200 mAh three cell 30c and this is generally available in the general store also in the market also and in uh, online store and the standard esa which is simonk 30 ampere esc simonk is the company 30 ampere is the ampere rating and esc this is this is the two standard battery and standard esc i will also discuss later uh, while building process so this is the flight time estimation you just have to go for xcopter calci this is the software type in google xcopter calci uh, uh, like uh, enter your requirement uh, the model weight number of motors frame size uh, controller that is esc a uh, motor uh, select the motor what you are use what you are using propeller size and then just you have to enter this only don't go for other parameters and here maximum discharge 80% select it at 80% this one only this you have to select take a screenshot you will remember it and then press ca calculate and you will see here the graph like 7.6 load here the the this needle should be in green side every needle should be in green side the hover flight time which is 24.2 minute the uh, electric power which is uh, around uh, 100 watt the temperature which is 43 degrees celsius thrust to weight ratio should be greater than uh, 2 which is uh, two two times that thrust to weight ratio that the thrust should be two times of the weight so it's on green side and this is how these are several uh, information take a screenshot and you will uh, when you will read it uh, you will see then you will get to understand so there is time less time so i am moving forward these are the other essential this is a usb sp driver this is a battery charger this, these are also battery this is the manual this is the basic one which is available basic one that there are for three cell and four cell so these are the three lights when all the three lights turn into green the battery is fully charged uh, but initially it will be a red red color so when all the uh, three lights are at green position so the battery is fully charged and this is the balanced charger here you, you will select Uh, you will just connect the battery to charge position and it will uh, like uh, make uh, alarm kind of thing so it will uh, may uh, like the sound will come and the battery will like uh, either it will say the battery is charged or some beep kind of uh, sound will come so that the beep. this this signifies is the battery is charged and this is a servo tester here in servo tester you have to like you could sell, you can use this to uh, uh, like test the motor and uh, like uh, servo so what you have to do here, here you could see that out this is the output part this one out where it is written out this is the output and here this is the input now here you could see the signal positive and negative so the lightest wire the orange wire uh, here you uh, like kind of thing wire you will be you will see in esc or motor so esc for in motor not esc so the lightest wire the light color wire will be signal pin and the red is positive as you know and the dark like the black one will be negative same goes for in so when you you have to test the motor then connect only uh, input like towards input by connecting uh, the esc battery and motor connect the esc wire this kind of wire will be uh, come out from the esc so connect this wire to uh, in input part and rotate this the power will be available and rotate this regulator and you will test the motor this is the battery checker plug it anyway and it will display the uh, voltage okay so so first it will display the total weight uh, voltage of the battery and then number one cell number two cell number three cell voltage it will display this is some extension wire now design and selection now here from here starts to build how to build drone so uh, make it uh, like sure that you uh, like uh, pay attention from here itself because if you will not pay attention then you will not understand from here that that was just a description of how to build drone from here it will start the design selection and building drone okay first of all you have to select the frame type as per your application okay that is uh, if you want to build a basic drone then select the frame 450 if you want to build a racing drone then select that kind of that type of frame okay like if you want to uh, build a quadcopter or hexacopter kind of thing so frame type select kind of frame type okay selected secondly estimate total weight including battery weight and payload of your drone payload means like camera or any other stuffs which you have attached uh, like to perform some function okay so payload of your drone 
so how what is the total weight you will get frame weight uh, you will get uh, when you will buy the frame you will get to know the weight of the frame so frame weight plus battery weight battery weight generally uh, is 150 gram which is of uh, uh, 2200 mah what we told what i told you as a standard battery so select as that battery only so 150 gram kind of thing payload which is example camera and all plus electronic component which you are using okay so when you will buy such things in description you will get the weight of all the like all the parts and uh, assume second point uh, you don't know the motor weight so how do you like you have not se still selected the motor weight so uh, like sorry motor you have not selected the motor uh, still so wh how what what weight uh, you will select for the motor like for calculating total weight so assume 120 g as motor weight for estimating total you are estimating total weight You could, the weight should be uh, can be like what you have estimated can be more or can be less. So this is the estimation of total weight. So assume 120 gram as motor weight for estimation of total weight. So can, when you have calculated the total weight, so select motor. Now comes selection of motor. So select motor says that the total thrust should be 2.5 times the total weight. The uh, total weight, which is 2.5 times or two times as per. 2.5 times is the best because it will be more thrust as per than requirement so the hover will be more stable so should be i uh, we recommend generally we recommend 2.5 times of the total weight that means the pour into thrust of one motor okay so pour into thrust of one motor should be 2.5 times the total weight okay uh, suppose uh, my estimation of total weight is 850 g the total thrust will be 250 850 sorry 850 g so my estimation total weight so 850 into 2.5 that is 2125 g total thrust required per motor divided by 4 that is 531.25 and approximate approximate uh, the total thrust the thrust required per motor that is thrust required for one motor one motor will generate this much amount of thrust should have uh, should generate uh, this uh, like 600 g the thrust generated by one motor should be 600 g select propeller and frame size depending on and select propeller and frame size depending on prop propeller size like the frame size size of the frame should be uh, depending on propeller size what you have selected okay now comes motor propeller esc and battery selection this table has uh, like uh, showed you before so depending on this you have a selection but the standard motor and propeller what uh, we will use in this workshop will be Like the bam motor, propeller, ESC, and battery. What we will use in this workshop will be this: A two two one two thirteen T. Thirteen T is the number of turns, and thousand kV motor with propeller nine into four point five inch, two clockwise motor uh, propeller, and two and counterclockwise propeller. ESC thirty ampere battery, eleven point one twenty two hundred mAh three S thirty C battery. Thirty C, you know that C rating. Now frame selection. So I told you before that depending on prop size. So like. consider for propeller and motor uh, this table and consider uh, for frame selection consider this table you could by seeing this table you could understand for 450 to 500 what we are using f450 450 to 500 size uh, frame size uh, the propeller size should be 9 inch to 12 inch <clears throat> okay so we are selecting 9 inch motor uh, motor size will be 2 to 1 2 what we have selected 2 to 1 2 motor speed which is 8 800 to 1000 we have selected 1000 and uh, this is uh, battery battery lipo battery size uh, 3300 30 3300 plus so actually this decides the flight time so if you are using this battery it's okay as if it is not available in the market then go little less like 22 we could select 2200 mAh battery for this uh, configuration so it, it does, uh, like it will not create much difference now this is f450 this is how f450 looks like a blueprint of the propeller blueprint is a like why i put it this blueprint because you could see the length of the total length of the quadcopter this is the diameter of the propeller and here you could see here gap so this gap should be there either 1 inch gap or 2 inch gap so gap should be there okay So, what does 450 m uh, size 450 means? 450 means the center to center distance. Here you could say for 455 mm. The center to center distance is the 455 mm. So, uh, type on internet uh, the diagram of, for example, if you want this diagram on uh, 
one diagram of 450 uh, size uh, frame. So type F450 size uh, yeah, diagram like this diagram, and you will get to know the diagram, the size and dimension of the frame. So why like the frame should be for quadcopter? The frame should be in perfect square, and the side of the square should be more than the size of the propeller, like 363 mm. So it's more than the size what we selected of the propeller. So it should be more. It should be a, so for quadcopter. It should be a perfect square. If you are making your own frame also, so it should be a perfect square. And depending on prop size, the size of the frame should be designed. So now comes setup, programming, connection, and calibration. Uh, these are the two boards what uh, what uh, like I discussed before. And this is one board. This what we are using is this KK 2.5 multi rotor control board display one. Okay, now first thing you have to do is download the KK multi copper flash tool. From where you will download, it's a Lazy Zero uh, website. Uh, like I'm showing you the website. Uh, yeah, this one. Yeah, this is the website. Uh, go at this website, lazyzero.de. Okay, now here you could see KK flash tool. Okay, KK flash tool. So you have to download this software, KK Flash Tool. Okay, download this, click on this, and you will appear on this page, and you will see several other uh, like bo supported boards and all. So you don't have to do, scroll down to download. Uh, you are using like uh, the latest stable software version. You, we are using, like I'm using window. If you are having OS, like uh, a laptop, macbook for mac you will download this flash tool and for windows you will download this flash tool so i have downloaded everything and also uh, you will uh, if you will scroll down then isp adapter uh, so this is the isp adapter and you have to also driver this is the driver for usb asp so uh, you have to download this also okay so this is uh, the website you have to download this from here it will when you will open the website then you will get to know while scrolling go to driver and go to download you will download here you will download the software and here you will download the us driver for usb sp driver okay uh, so uh, now i will move in to ppt so uh, you have we have downloaded the kk multi copper flash tool uh, here is uh, when you will download it Here, yeah. this is the folder, the KK Flash tool. So this is the folder which uh, like uh, software will be downloaded when you will download. So it will appear like this. So this is the. So setup and programming. So install Java. You have to have uh, Java in your laptop. So install Java, the latest version. And second, third thing, you have to disable the driver signature enforcement for Windows 10. So driver, info, how to disable it? Go in settings, uh, go in sec security and update, go in recovery, uh, uh, advanced option, troubleshoot, in advanced startup, press restart. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Setting, security and update, recovery, and this, and then you have to go for in advanced startup, press restart, because after recovery. And then you have to go for troubleshoot, and then you have to go for advanced option, then go for startup setting, then go for press restart, then press seven to disable DSC. Okay, and I've shared the screenshot of this. Uh, you have go like this is the update and security window for in settings. So in advance, like um, you are in uh, a go for recovery, like a recovery this uh, recovery option. So when you will go in recovery. It will appear like this advanced startup restart now restart it will appear like this then go for troubleshoot then go for advanced option then go for uh, startup setting okay then go for uh, in status setting click restart and when you when the pc will restart uh, it will appear like this press 7 on your keyboard you will disable the driver signature in post -time. So this is the connect the USB SP device to KK board ISP header. So the connection should be like this. The pink colors wire should be 
towards the side of the button this this is the proper connection to usb sp driver so i showed you uh, the port where you have to connect the isp header okay now uh, connect the usb sp driver to like uh, to computer when you will open the device manager if it is showing exclamatory marks then the device is, device is not installed in your computer like the driver the programmer is not installed asp means avr uh, like uh, avr uh, a serial programmer what does avr means advanced virtual risc what is risc means reduced instruction set computing don't go i just uh, like uh, to know the full form of your asp i have written it so uh, you you will see here uh, an exclamatory mark like usb sp exclamatory in device manager just click right uh, right button of your mouse and uh, it will appear like this update the driver software update it and browse my click on browse browse my computer for driver software then you will uh, open this window uh, like uh, go in this win uh, window and select this usb sp m driver like when you will download the driver then uh, the folder the folders which will uh, will be downloaded will be these two so select the second one usb win driver one okay you have selected it then next and then uh, install the driver software anyway uh, if it appears if it appears a window security so then close it now run the multi capture flash tool dump the firmware in the kicker board how to uh, like how to uh, uh, like run the firmware like the run the kk multi copper flash tool uh, so i uh, what folder which i show, showed you before click on that folder open it that folder and click on kk uh, flash tool win 32 32 means 32 bit computer which is, is like uh, click for 32 it's a more stable if 64 is not opening then click for 32 then the uh, tool will be look like this so i will show you how it will look so take a flash tool i've opened it and here so it will take some time to open it yeah so this is like i uh, in doctor by copy and paste so that's why now it might happen it's not opening so it will take some time and it will open uh, so it will appear like this so how to do how to configure the uh, like board to with kk multi copper flash tool here you could say that usb the driver which you have selected for programmer what is the programmer it, which is usb sp programmer so select that usb sp program, uh, programmer port which is usb port now you are using kk board like the what what board you are using so i am using kk 2.1.5 so where it is yeah this first one hobby king to kk 2.1 kk 2.1.5 okay select this uh, then you will move to all firmware types like what is a firmware type it is uh, like uh, kk 2.1 which is uh, okay so now go for yeah this one select this one like depending on uh, the kk version and all so uh, and then press this green light 
like kk version what you what i'm saying kk version is like uh, it it will be written on the uh, description when you will buy the kk board and it will write, like uh, the version that kk 2.1.5 you have just the first like when you will buy kk 2.1.5 then select the first one just first one select and press the uh, green light you are seeing here green light so, uh, you will when you will press this the uh, the programming will start i am not gonna, like the board is not connected to my laptop so it's it's going red so this is how you will do it actually uh, when you will uh, buy kk 2.1.5 so you don't have to update like you dump the form actually it is the firmware is within itself but if you want to update the firmware then you can go and like uh, go for and update the firmware with this kk multi copper crash kit now this is after uh, when you when the firmware is updating or when the firmware is dumping in the board the board will be blank it will be a blank screen shown in the board and after completing a red light will be appear okay and then uh, all the sensors it will show that it is okay and then it will move to main menu now this is uh, this is the assembly part uh, this is a video this is the frame which you will buy online mm, this is the frames okay which is f450 this is, these are the motors this is 100 kv 1000 uh, kv motor this is 8221233000 kv motor and these are the esc so this uh, like uh, in this video you will see like uh, uh, how to connect like you are seeing like how to connect motors to arms arms this is this is the arms of the uh, frame like just uh, screw it uh, like you have to tight screw uh, and you will connect the motors to arms like connect all the four motors like this okay now comes uh, here here you could see uh, sorry this here you could see this this uh, frame is having inbuilt power distribution board so you don't have to buy uh, separately a power distribution board you just have to solder the esc to this power distribution board and esc is having this two kind of red and uh, red and black wire this red black and this red wire and black wire so you have to solder this this red is positive black is negative so so remember uh, re connect red wire to positive and the negative wire to like uh, black one so you remember the positive to red and negative to black otherwise it will damage the board and it will a flight controller board and also esc so connect this so positive and you should remember the polarity while connection so how to do soldering is like take this paste uh, dip this two wire into it and put some paste on also this is the soldering paste okay apply to both the polar uh, like positive and negative to both positive and negative so uh, take the soldering wire and put the soldering uh, like the liquid one which is on the that positive one and put the wire and then hold it for a second for, for a while and you will solder it so this is how you have to solder both the wire in positive and negative one of the esc okay and uh, now you have to uh, same way you have to connect all the four uh, esc all the four esc which is electronic speed controller all like this you have to connect it okay so this is how you have to connect the arms with this power distribution board the bottom uh, surface like bottom panel 
so connect this like this uh, f50 when you will buy f50 you will get all this thing in the set only uh, like in the packet only so connect all the screws properly and tightly the screw should be connected tightly so connect it tightly okay and now uh, connect all the four arms like same way as it is connected this like i have connected this one so this is how connected all the four arms with all the four motors okay and zip tie the esc to the arms and you should have you should remember that you should zip tie the esc very tightly so it shouldn't like uh, uh, like it should uh, to remove like uh, the esc should be fixed at the arm it should be tightly fixed in the arm so and cut the extra zip uh, zip tie like the extra zip tie and here you could see that uh, this motor is ha not having bullet pins bullet pins like the wire is open so what you have to do you have to solder it but uh, but when you will buy esc the uh, esc and motor uh, like i'm um, when you will buy it then you will have a, like the motor and the esc will have bullet pins female female and male connected so if if it is not having then you have to solder it like this but if, if it is having i will i recommend to have to buy motor and esc with bullet pins because uh, some of them uh, some like if you are, if uh, you are buying motors which is not having such bullet so this is the bullet pins this is the bullet pins this is the bullet pins which is uh, like uh, having connection so uh, and connection should be like this the positive one should go in positive uh, sorry uh, and the negative one should go in the negative that is the red one would go to red red one and the negative uh, black one pri primarily you have to connect this like like this primary all the four motors okay so this is the wire which will come out from the motor with the bullet pin with male and female with the esc connect this uh, this way like uh, red to red and black to black and the middle wire will connect to the middle of the esc okay so this is how all the four motors are connected here this is the battery part this is the battery part this is here uh, this when you will buy simong 30 ampere esc so that esc will have this kind of connectors at the end uh, at the end which is uh, which will be connected to the power distribution board so if you are having connector then it's okay then cut, cut this connector by uh, knife or scissor and all so cut this and make it a uh, wire to be soldered in that power distribution board so remove this dnt this dnt plug so you will solder it with power distribution board. But for this, you have to have bullet paint. It will safer. Like it's a safer side to connect motors and ESC. Uh, without bullet paint, you have to solder it. You have to then uh, re-solder it and re-solder it. Then it will be very much difficult for you. Oh, sorry. Actually, sorry, I skipped the video. Uh, like. Uh, uh, so you have to see from starting um actually uh, i pressed next so you have to see this video from starting so i'm really sorry for that uh, you are seeing video for like from before so please bear for a for a minute like it will over it i'm sure you are not getting bored with this uh, explanation and all because uh, it's a more basic most basic and most simple uh, explanation to build drone and construction purpose so uh, like step by it's a very very simple and a most basic one uh, you uh, like you will get to know how to connect and how to assemble the parts so uh, like remember all the steps step by step and uh, if you wish then you can take a screenshot of every step so you, so that you could remember because it's a uh, like online workshop so 
uh, you might face difficulty because in physical you can take uh, like a snap of every moment or you could take video of every moment but in this you have to take screenshots so that you can remember uh, what the what what are the steps are involved in uh, assembly and uh, all other stuff. So as as soon as the assembly and calibration is completed, only just bear for half an hour more, and the every part will be con uh, like completed. Only 20 minutes you have to bear it, and uh, 20 minutes or uh, 30 minutes. So the part will be completed uh, as soon as the this assembly and the calibration part is completed the building of the drone is completed so just uh, like uh, see very properly this videos because this will help to make your drone and remember every every slide and if you have any confusion then we can share the slide or uh, could we could share the so soft copy of uh, study material so you could learn from there and make uh, actually uh, so in and you have we have we will also teach like how uh, how to fly the drone because uh, and, uh, like uh, uh, at starting people face difficulties uh, in flying and all so that that is also a crucial part of uh, uh, like building drones and construction so just bear for 30 minutes and uh, all the all other stuff stuffs will be completed and uh, you will enjoy this thing like And remember, every uh, nut or uh, like the the fixing the fix when you are, when you are fixing the arms with the, this base plate, base plate, this this should be tight. It shouldn't be loose. Otherwise, uh, you might face crashing. Like the your uh, the drone sh uh, might face like crash. So uh, remember to make every connection very firmly, very tightly, so that uh, uh, you uh, like the there is no prone to crash and all. Cut this extra zip tie and I fix fix this uh, ESC. Now comes uh, like what I have um, I've discussed you how to do connections and all. So remember every connection properly. Don't make it a wrong connection. A wrong connection will lead to damage your parts because it's an electronic part, so it will get damaged as soon as you do wrong wrong connection. That is a wrong polarity. But remember, uh, at one thing you have to know that uh, the connection which I sh uh, showed you, it's a basic connection. Like it's a, uh, you could say that the baseline of the connection of ESC and motor. But uh, as we know that the uh, power, uh, like the current which is uh, supplied to the motor is pulsed AC current. Pulsed AC means like the polarity is same AC. Like there is no confusion in polarity now for AC current. So the polarity, uh, you if you are connecting, this is the like basic connection. This is the like uh, this is the base for the connection, like red to red, black to black. For uh, for example, uh, all the four motors is rotating in clockwise direction, and you have to uh, change the uh, like direction of rotation of any two motors. You just have to swap any two wire, any two wire, because if uh, and you can swap this two polarity also, the positive to negative, the red and white, uh, red and black wire. But if you if you will swap any two wire, either yellow or black, then it will work because the current supply to is uh, pulse AC. It's not DC. So because the AC, the, the what why it is uh, battery is the DC one. Nah? So uh, because the ESC is converting, ESC is the programmer for this uh, like controller for this motor. So ESC is converting the DC supply to pulsed ESC, not synchronous one. Synchronous is like the normal AC which is received in our home and all, all of the uh, AC motors are working. But here it is pulsed ESC in form of pulse. So this uh, the polarity will not affect here. In in case of motor only, don't uh, take it as a other uh, other electronic components only in motor. Okay, so this is how we do uh, did it uh, solder uh, motor and ESC. This is the heat shrink tubes. If you are soldering the uh, ESC and uh, motor, so you have to uh, apply this heat shrink. Heat shrink is like when you will slide to where uh, the soldering is done, and you will uh, apply heat either from lighter or any soldering iron. So it will uh, like it will 
uh, shrink and it will grip it. So it is a uh, insulation for that sole frame. So here is the upper plate. You have to connect it. You have to just connect the nuts at proper in a proper way. And this is the flight controller board. Now what I uh, told you, like uh, the you know, when you will uh, like uh, fix this flight controller board to uh, frame, you have to uh, check the arrow which is uh, on the flight controller board. And this is aileron. If it's aileron, roll, elevator pitch, throttle, throttle and rudder, way off. Okay, so um, take a double-sided tape, uh, apply on the flight controller board on both the side. Okay, and remove the covering and paste it on uh, the like frame. And remember this arrow. This arrow. What I told you before. This arrow should be in the direction of forward motion of your quadcopter. For example, I uh, we have selected this white arm. White arms you are seeing a white color arm. See, white color arm is our forward position, and the back the red color arm is our backward position. So the arrow should point the forward motion, forward uh, like portion of the forward part of the quadcopter. So you should affix the board in that direction only. So do it in the right way, like you have seen here, how it is done. And this is DNT plug. Uh, why, like you, like you have to select the use this and connect the solder it wire. But remember, uh, in power distribution board, what uh, we did was like we uh, solder it that wire for uh, battery ESC and all, and then we are connecting this DNT plug. But you could buy this XT60 connector in online, uh, which is available. So write XT60 connect uh, power distribution board, and you will buy this kind of. Solder this wire, this two wire in the power distribution board where the battery has to be soldered for positive to positive and negative to negative. Solder it in that in that uh, like uh, position uh, and and then you will select the battery, uh, then connect the battery and then you will uh, assembly is done. So so there uh, assembly is done. Okay, so uh, there th that was the complete assembly of the. Uh, quadcopter motor assembly as uh, ESC assembly and all and battery is also connected like that only so connect solder that uh, to battery portion and connect the battery the battery is having xt60 connector uh, so this is the why now comes connection uh, like connection what how to do what uh, battery connection and all what i'm saying there saying that the xt60 connector what we are using to connect the battery to power distribution board that is uh, normally battery comes with xt60 connector only so i recommend to buy that connector and solder in that uh, power distribution board or you could solder one to uh, one red wire and one black wire in the power distribution for in battery part and connect that dnt plug or connect any uh, extra connector and like xt60 connector and connect the battery so that is simple thing you don't have to worry about that you when you will see the Map out, you will understand it completely. So this is how assembly, uh, kind of like assembly and all have done. Uh, assemble the receiver at the this position, uh, the extended part of the base plate, mm, yeah. and power uh, like file controller is also all. And uh, here, here you can see that some of the batteries having DNT female connector. So the red and wire which I soldered in power distribution board and the DNT plug I have soldered it. So I will connect like this. So if I'm using XT60 connector, then uh, the battery connector will be not this DNT plug. The battery connector will be XT60. Okay. So connect the battery first uh, without doing any connection to power distribution board, just to bind the receiver. Like I have not uh, now. Like first step, the first step only for connection and calibration is to bind the receiver with the transmitter. How to bind the receiver and transmitter? Like uh, take one ESC, like you have connected the power distribution board to battery. Okay, now take one wire of ESC, any one wire of ESC, like any ESC wire, this one wire, like the wire which is connected. Uh, one, there are uh, three wires now. One is connected with power distribution, like three pair of wires. Three, uh, like the three wire which is uh, for motors, one 
two pair, the red and black is for power, which is in connected in power distribution board, and one more wire, like there is one more wire in ESC, which is coming out from the ESC, is this red, black, and wire, white one. So this is the wire which will connect it to, uh, like to uh, have a, a command, like to give command to motor, whether it was uh, like to increase the throttle, decrease the throttle amount. So take this wire and connect to ESC. Sorry, the ESC wire, connect the, uh, this, you know, like take any one ESC wire, like this wire, and connect to receiver. And how uh, how to connect to receiver? Like you are seeing here three pins. First, uh, this pin, this pin, and this pin. So this pin is the first pin, which is towards this channel number, channel number one, channel number two. This pin, this first pin is signal pin. And the second one is positive pin, and the third pin is negative pin. Okay. First is signal, second is positive, third is negative. So same color coding is there here. White one, the lightest color wire, which I told you, the lightest color wire is the signal pin. For, uh, red one is positive and the like the black one is negative. So connect like that properly. Remember this connection towards this direction, the signal pin, the signal wire should be in this direction only. So connect like that. Now take the bind key. This is a bind key which you will get uh, in uh, uh, like from with receiver and transmitter. When you will buy receiver and transmitter, you will get this key. Connect to this port, this bat, B A T bat. Here it is written B A T bat. So connect to this port. Here this bat. So connect this uh, wire to this port. You can get any way. Like you could. You, there is no um, polarity. So. The status without binding, so there is no binding with the receiver and transmitter. So the blink will be appear. The light will blink, keep on blinking. This is the status light of the receiver. So it keeps on blinking when the binding is not there between transmitter and receiver. So what you have to do, take the transmitter. This is the this transmitter which is without display transmitter, which is a, a diff, like standard transmitter which is available for beginners and all. So this is the throttle one, which will increase and decrease. And this is the, uh, like for LRO, for yaw, uh, sorry, LRA, roll and pitch. This is, this is for roll and pitch. So here it was, there was one binding key, small, this binding key, press this binding key and switch on the transmitter and then leave. So you will see here the status light is stops, is steady. So you could see here the binding is completed. So take out this binding key and disconnect the wire. So now you have to take out this binding key for a further connection. And disconnect the connection or to save battery. Now comes uh, wiring with this binding is complete. Now comes connection and uh, uh, wiring with KK board. Now remember that your transmitter should be at off position for this. This are the two ESC, which, and this is the forward direction, which I told you, which is a for forward direction. And this is the arrow which signifies the forward direction of, uh, of my configuration. So remember this arrow should be in direction of forward motion only, forward direction only. Otherwise it will be failed to identify the forward direction. Like the color coding should be there for forward direction. White one is for forward direction. And you, uh, previously I discussed like this is the anti-clockwise direction where the motor one, motor two, motor three, and motor four. So this one rotates its clockwise direction. This one will rotate in anti-clockwise, clockwise, and then anti-clockwise. So this is the configuration. Now select first motor. First motor should be selected uh, to be to connect pin number one, like motor number one. So motor number one, number motor number two, motor number three, and motor number four. So connect. Take the wire of first motor, connect to motor one number one, that is M1. And remember here it is written here, you can see signal pin, the positive one, five volt here, it is, it is a positive one and a negative one. This S1, this one is, this one pin is a signal pin. So connect that uh, white wire to the signal pin, okay? Here you could say signal pin. This one is positive, this one is negative. So the wire for the, for the signal pin should go in signal pin, wire for the positive should go in positive, wire for the negative should go in negative. So connect the first motor to first pin. This one, this one pin. 
then second motor to second pin the third motor to third pin and fourth motor to fourth pin <coughs> this connection I connect properly so that there is no so here signal pin goes in signal pin positive goes in positive pin and negative goes in negative pin. connect all the four motors respectively connect it properly so that there is no wrong connection and in serial manner that is one first motor first motor first motor goes first pin third second motor goes second pin third motor goes in third pin and fourth motor goes in fourth pin oh shit okay uh, so this is the receiver and uh, now motor connection has been done okay now comes a receiver to a board connection like how to do receiver connection to board connection i told you before the aileron part the uh the rudder part the throttle part the pitch part and all so the first pin is aileron what is for what we call call as roll okay so this is the wire we are uh, connecting. So this, this is the wire which we call as servo extension wire. This is the uh, two female, like, uh, sorry, female to female wire. So uh, you will buy, you will buy in a, if you will buy the complete. So buy the thing is like several wire so i have selected this red wire as a signal wire okay and i have selected this uh, middle wire as a positive one and the last one is the negative it is black as as usual so here this is also there is a signal pin positive one and the negative one so this one is a signal pin remember this one is uh, towards lcd this is a signal pin five volt and the negative one so first is the aileron so connect aileron to first channel aileron is first channel that is roll the roll of the drone so it's a first channel so connect the wire uh, properly that is signal to signal positive to positive and negative to negative so connect and depending on this connection only you have to do connection with the receiver that is signal wire goes should goes to signal pin positive should go to positive and the negative should go to negative remember this connection this connection is very important i am repeatedly saying please uh, like remember the connection uh, the remember the positive signal and negative one because it will uh, if it is a wrong connection then it will damage the uh, flight controller board and also receiver so signal pin and the positive and the negative should go in as sequence way so the first is all around the second one is pitch control like the roll control first is roll control goes in first channel the second is pitch control which is uh, we in say elevator in terms of flight controller and the third one is uh, <coughs> throttle third one is throttle which is ascend and descend one like throttle kind of throttle increase and throttle down like throttle which will uh, increase the rpm of all the four motor like at a time in equal manner so throttle so first one is uh, roll second one is pitch pitch the moving forward and backward first one is roll uh, moving sideward like right and left third is throttle and the fourth one is yaw which is rotating at a vertical axis vertical axis which is yaw which we uh, you saw before like previously so this is how we connection we do connection with uh, flight control board and one port one more port is there auxiliary port so if you want to toggle some auxiliary channel in the flight controller board so you can connect this auxiliary port to the channel number five so channel number five is a stick which is uh, like uh, on the like extra channel which is available uh, in the transmitter this is actually a uh, six channel receiver six channel transmitter and receiver so you could use six functions so i have connected this auxiliary port to 
channel number five and this connection should be in proper proper way like ch check it properly like is it from signal to signal positive positive and negative to negative the connection shouldn't be wrong okay this connection has been done now connect the battery without uh, like the transmitter should not be on the transmitter should be at off position so here you could see the error is showing in the uh, like uh, flight controller board and uh, when you will connect the battery then there will be a sound don't worry about the sound this is just a when you will connect first first uh, like first time you will connect the first time like when you will give the power to board first time then it will display like this so there will be a sound don't worry about that sound just click on menu these are the buttons which will be toggle the menu and all here you could say that error self level is off error uh, no your input no the battery is at, uh, like this much and temperature is this much so select the main menu button okay you will see uh, some kind of you will hear some kind of beep and it will appear this menu will appear this okay now this is the transmitter now you have to on the transmitter okay so on the transmitter you go to flight controller board and press on menu like when you have connected on the transmitter after connection after connecting after giving power to board then you have to on like switch on the transmitter so press menu so you will appear some kind of list go down press down button and go to acc calibration which will be appear shortly here this one is acc calibration and uh, uh first uh, sorry first you have to go for show motor layout load and load motor layout so go to load motor motor layout like you have to select the configuration first you have to select the configuration so load motor layout go to load motor layout and then press down like there are several other single copter dual copter tricopter you have to use quad copter x like x copter like x configuration what we are doing is x configuration so quadcopter plus mode it will appear plus mode and the second one will be quadcopter x mode so go in press down button uh, and then press enter are you sure uh, then press yes and then you will see some like the motor layout first motor second motor third motor fourth motor as per your connection <clears throat> first motor clockwise second motor anti clockwise and now here here you have to change the polarity so you have checked like you have connect, like you have connected positive to positive red black red black so all the motors are rotating in clockwise same connection all the uh, connection the connection of the motor are same now here you have to change the polarity like change the polarity or change any two wire like the bullet pins you have connected the escn uh, motor the esc bullet pins can uh, like uh, swap any two wire so for example for uh, all the motors are rotating in clockwise direction so swap if if, if you will swap these two like uh, motor number two and num motor number four uh any two wire then the direction will be changed so swap any two wire either red or black wire uh, or any or uh, middle wire and red black or middle wire or uh like middle one or red color red color wire or middle one or black color wire. any two wire so i prefer uh, mostly to swap red and black wire uh, so uh, the connection which you did before will rotate the motor in clockwise direction so for anti clockwise for motor number 2 and motor number 4 change the red and black wire uh, like swap the uh, swap the both the both the wire for motor number 2 and motor number 4 okay oh shit Wait, so I'm letting you so actually I skip that PPT. So here uh, we were here. So.
so yeah this one so here look at here so here is what number so what i told you do it like that and you will get to have a uh, like uh, the motor direction okay so now press back like go to back or you have you will go next then you will uh, step by step uh, direction will see like you will see the direction it will guide you step by step but you know it uh, previously like how to do it so press back so here when you will do next it will appear for no motor number 2 motor number 3 and then motor number 4 so there are no, no motor number 5 so it is unused so press back press back and uh, uh, you will appear this menu go back now you will do go up and you will do acc calibration this is what we had had i was talking this is calibration which will calibrate your board flight controller board that accelerometer ca calibration so this is important uh, so press enter and you will press enter it will move to the calibration part so you have to uh, do this because of uh, like to uh, calibrate all the sensors of the board like gyro sensors and uh, accelerometer sensor so press enter so place the aircraft you have to place the aircraft at level position like it shouldn't be at bed or anything place the aircraft at level position that is at floor it should be level so place that that position and then press enter like continue so it will calibrate it will take 5 seconds to calibrate so calibrating then okay all the accelerometer sensors uh, like sensors are okay calibration succeeded and then continue <coughs> all you have done it <coughs> now you have to press back and you will see here safe so this is the menu which uh, it will appear uh when you will uh, like press back, uh, back button Be previously it was appearing error and beep if you, you are hearing some beep sound so here the board is calibrated all the sensors has been calibrated and the safe like safe uh, like safe it is written safe here here it is the safe level is off okay here okay means that the calibration and all is done with the of the board with your quad copter so now uh, switch off the transmitter okay disconnect the battery now a part comes to calibrate esc like you, you have calibrated your board now to calibrate esc like uh, you could say that throttle calibration that you will increase the throttle then it will respond accordingly this throttle stick this one throttle stick when you will increase the throttle stick then esc will respond accordingly so you have to calibrate first how to do calibration first you have to keep the transmitter off position okay so connect uh, uh, one esc like the first esc which you have to calibrate uh, you have to do with all four all four esc so connect this esc uh, to throttle that this one is any like any of the port or it could say that you can also connect to throttle like uh, you have sorry you have to connect it throttle only because you are calibrating esc with throttle stick so you have to connect that throttle port only like the third channel you have to connect all the esc at third channel for calibration esc for calibrating throttle of for all the esc you have to connect all the esc to throttle pin only that is third pin for calibrating not for other connection for calibrating only so don't be confused uh, between other connection and between throttle calibration so this is the throttle cal calibration uh, for particular esc okay so switch on the trans uh, switch of the transmitter and uh, put the stick up at upward position okay now connect the battery and then uh, pull the transmitter stick down okay uh, and then disconnect the battery now you will uh, now after connecting the battery like you see here you could see here a voice so after a third beep like what you saw the when you connected the battery uh, after pulling the stick down uh, for, uh, the three the, the step is like switch on the switch off the transmitter pull the stick up connect the esc with throttle pin 
uh, okay if this much you have done now connect the battery and switch uh, like uh, switch on the transmitter can first you have to switch on the transmitter then you have to connect the battery so you have uh, pull the stick up at upward position max position switch on the transmitter okay you have switched on the transmitter you have connected this for, uh, wire to third channel and then now connect the battery okay now when you when you will connect the battery the stick is at up, uh, like upmost position maximum position the throttle stick then pull the stick down switch off the transmitter disconnect the battery then after that after doing this then again connect the battery so after connecting the battery you will uh, you will hear three beep like uh, like first and uh, second beep will be uh, uh, like frequently but the third beep the last beep will be a uh, long one so it will be the the third after third wave you will hear like you will have a confirmation that the esc has been calibrated so this is how motor is running after calibration that is it is responding to your stick so it, uh, this is how the throt, uh, esc has been calibrated uh, esc throttle has been calibrated so you have to do with all the four motors like this only likewise now uh, switch off the switch on the transmitter and connect it connect the battery okay you will see here again you will hear three beep first beep second beep and third is the longest one so you will see here when i will increase the uh, like after connecting all so this here here uh, you could see your uh, your giving power to board okay so you are giving power to board that means the connection should be done the four, first channel second channel third channel and fourth channel that is all the motors should respond Uh, as per your uh, command given by the transmitter. Okay. Now, uh, like uh, uh, like you have seen here, arm position. I have moved the left stick, left stick, the throttle stick towards left direction. So you, I will arm my board. So after arming my board, uh, okay. Now after arming my board, I will increase the all the motor. Okay, so here left stick. I have put the left stick towards left direction. So here the motor are rotating, but there are one problem. There is one problem. The, all the four motors are not running at their at most speed. Like some motors are uh, running at uh, like proper RPM, but some are not. This one is not rotating. This one is also not. But they are back to you can't see. But it is they are rotating. So when I am increasing the throttle above fifty percent, then all motors are rotating. So here the both throttle now the both throttle calibration has not been done. So previously what we did is the ESC throttle calibration. Now we have to do both throttle cal calibration so that all the four motors should run at proper RPM at a proper 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 amount of throttle which is given with the stick left stick. So you have to do like that. so place the stick at uh, bottom position and disarm the flight controller board by moving towards right okay now we what we have to do you have to pull the stick up and switch on the transmitter you have done this okay now connect the flight controller board by pressing these two first without uh, pressing these two first button and the fourth button don't connect the battery so pressing press it simultaneously press first button and the fourth button simultaneously and connect the battery don't leave don't leave the first button and the second one don't leave it see here you could see uh, 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 like you will see sound of throttle calibration how it happens now what you have to do now like you have to lower the stick you have to lower the stick without leaving hand you don't have to leave you uh, don't pull out the land hand from that two button first button and the second button then you have to uh, be uh, like lower the transmitter stick the, the throttle stick okay so here after three beep like the first beep and the second beep and the third one which is longer one after hearing this three beep then here the thr throttle calibration has been completed now you can remove the both of the hand and disconnect the battery okay so here your calibration connection and all everything has done has been done uh, now switch on the transmitter connect the battery
connect the battery and uh, increase the throttle. You will see the motors will respond perfectly to uh, amount of throttle you are giving with the transmitter. So you will see that when I will arm the arm, like moving the stick towards left of throttle stick, like towards left, uh, the red uh, red color uh, light will be appear on the board. So this means the bo board has been armed. And you remember, don't connect propeller. Don't connect propeller with the motor. Uh, initially, while doing this, all the connections and calibrations and everything, don't connect propeller. It's a uh, like risky thing to do. So here you can see that all the four motors are respond responding perfectly. So here, uh, this is the uh, uh, like uh, the what what I told you the alarm one, the buzzer alarm, which is uh, which comes with flight controller board. Is this is the buzzer alarm? So you have to connect that this buzzer alarm to piezo port. What I told you before is a piezo port. So connect this uh, buzzer alarm to piezo port. You will hear alarm when uh, there is a discharge, like amount of. Uh, the even when the battery will discharge or when uh, at a particular amount what you have set in the board i will tell i will tell you, tell you like how to do it how to set a particular amount of voltage below if, if the battery discharge below that voltage then the alarm will activate it so connect this way towards like the polarity here is the polarity one uh, so arrow towards arrow so towards as the red red the positive one is towards arrow so remember this connection the uh, the Positive wire is towards arrow. Red wire is towards arrow. Okay. So, uh, this is uh, this is the connection. Like arm, um, when you will arm the board, like when the board is armed, so you will hear a, a buzzer beep. So this is the also this also works uh, during arm and disarm. So this is uh, okay. This is used of, use of the buzzer. So this is how it responds when armed and disarmed. Okay. So this calibration and connection and calibration, all everything has been done. Now we will move to settings and tuning. Okay. Now this is settings and tuning. Uh, first, go in menu button. Uh, click on miscellaneous setting one. Okay. Then go for uh, this alarm one upon ten volts. Set to 105. 105 means divided by 10, that is 10.5 volts. So when you have connected that uh, input voltage connection with the uh, GST wire of uh, battery, uh, so that connection uh, with the uh, with the flight controller board will give the input voltage, the voltage of the battery. For example, when the battery will discharge below 10.5 volts, that is, if you will set this uh, 105, which is 80% of the battery voltage, so uh, like uh, you will uh, like you you are using 80 percent of the battery so like depending on the battery usage you want to use you want to uh, like uh, for example some will set 102 some will send 100 100 so depending on that I uh, discharge so after when the battery has been discharged below like it will when it will discharge below 10.5 that is 1 upon 10 divide and multiply by 105 that is 10.5 so this is the 10.5 volts so uh, after when the battery is discharged below this voltage, that it will al uh, al you will hear an alarm and you will land your drone uh, because below this uh, you will not have to discharge the battery. Otherwise, uh, you may lead to crash. Okay. Now PI data. Now for uh, like there is a PI tuning at standard. Uh, like when you will calibrate everything and you will fly the drone at standard PI setting. PI is the partial integral and differential. It's a control system in every, because what is flight controller? Flight controller is a control system. Just remember, it's an option in flight controller PI editor, where PID, D is constant. We have kept D constant, uh, standard, the manufacturer has kept D constant. So what we do is we change P gain and I gain. So PI editor is basically sensitivity. Most of you have played PUBG and also that in here, like in that you you set like you do settings and all uh, of sensitivity no? so, so same goes for drone you have to depend on muscles memory so you have to set particular amount 
uh, of pi gain and you will have to uh, like um, for example you have to fly and check like is it stable for your sense muscle memory or not so for pi data uh, like go on main menu pi data uh, go in P, uh, pi data press enter and you will see here first axis like roll for roll roll pi gain for beginners the standard one is this go go like change press on change like next press next go on pi gain press change and it will change the value of the pi gain and i gain also you have to say so this is the p limit a p gain and p i gain uh, you have to uh, set for sensitivity this is for beginners so if you want to go uh, like more sensitive like more sensitive if you want to more make drone your more sensitive then you have to increase this and you have to increase this and you have to check where where you are more comfortable so you have to fly and check you have to change you have to fly and check then you have to change then you have to fly and check then you will get your settings okay what is p limit and i uh, i limit it's a amount of uh, percentage it's a 550 percentage it's a, it's, a, it's a percentage that the amount of power drawn by the battery to perform this change this p gain change which is 75 so this p gain change the amount of power drawn by the battery to perform this change is uh, p limit so 50% amount uh, like you are drawing from battery to perform this p gain change and i gain change i limit is 20% of um, like power is drawing to perform this i gain change which is sensitivity okay so if you will increase further more like uh, above 100 like above 120 above 170 or you will if you will Put it as 170, then the you will it's harder to control because it will be more sensitive, more more sensitive, and the drone will oscillate. I will you will see further how drone oscillates. So this is how you will change. Uh, do it for pitch also same for as roll. And then your do it for your P gain is same for your for beginners, but I gain is 30. Okay. Now this is how you, when you will take a screenshot of this, and when you will read this, you will understand. but still i am explaining a uh, short uh, like short explanation when you will buy the kk board the default increase like default it will be default 100 30 and kind of thing so for checking that your pi uh, like p gain for checking where you are comfortable increase by 10 or 5 as come as per your requirement so at a time and test your rate of response by hovering and move the left stick in short and fast movements so Short, left stick means the roll uh, the left left part the left one the left stick of the transmitter that is roll and pitch so uh, for roll and pitch uh, move the left stick and check where how it is responding so depending on that you will uh, change so as you increase the gain the aircraft reacts faster feels more uh, connected to the stick movement and wander less on its own so it will response will be more okay so second aircraft may oscillate for a short time usually a few oscillation if uh, if you will increase more and more the oscillation will be there and this is how happens uh, when you will increase the aircraft uh, like when you will increase the peak gain and if it is a good response then peak gain is good this same goes for i tuning uh, read it uh, take a screenshot and read it because there is no time so i will uh, um, like uh, because i gain is 50% alternative setting for i gain is uh, 50 to 100% of the p gain we keep it at this position only so a uh, yaw p tuning which is uh, same as that of uh, p tuning for roll and pitch but difference is that like uh, there should be a response like uh, for if you are increasing the p gain then the aircraft start and stop faster like when you will start yawing it will stop faster and start faster but if you increase further more then it will overshoot that it will more it will turn more at a particular angle so uh, you have to keep in mind uh, in this the aircraft may start to climb or descend uh, when you will increase more and more and more so and your i tuning is uh, basically 100% of p gain i tuning i tuning for you now go we will move to mode setting and le self level setting this is the uh, setting which is uh you will do for auxiliary channel you have i have shown you like uh, the connection which we did for auxiliary channel uh, channel number 5 to auxiliary port of the flight control board we will do this mode setting and self level setting so the self level means the aircraft will self level itself when you will move the stick left then it will go left and self level itself so this is self level setting you uh, the beginner should have to go uh, should have to activate self level and fly the drone so then only they will fly the drone stably and they will learn it so uh, in the main menu you will see the self level is off 
but the when you will click main menu go in mode setting and press enter self level stick here it is uh, initially it will be stick change to aux like next uh, you will change press change button and it will change to aux aux matlab like uh, the auxiliary port in the flight controller board so this is the uh, this one this uh, you could see here one stick here is there one toggle button is there so it's initially at off position when you will uh, switch it to on position that is on position then it will uh, the self level will be activated how it is activated here uh, menu uh, in, uh, in front menu the front screen of the flight control board here it is initially self level is off when you toggle it toggle it up then it will self level is on okay so this uh, this is the self level setting sorry mode setting this is mode setting you are changing the mode of the flight controller board from uh, acro mode because when the self level is mode then it is in acrobatic mode acrobatic mode that is it is uh, like when you will stick moves uh, move the stick then it will go in direct in that direction and it will not return to its uh, level position so that is acro mode so you are changing the acro mode to uh, you will in mode setting you are changing acro mode to self level mode okay now you will go for self level setting and you will set the peak and i limit this is sensitivity so the p the sensitivity what you chose for uh, pi in what you chose in pi editor will be same in this also so press back and go for main menu sorry so here uh, now comes uh, receiver testing zero trim setting here you could say re receiver test this one this option press enter and you will see some values so you could see your trim this one slider is there this one slider is there this one slider is there this one so initially it will be at some other position so slide to zero position so here receiver test when i have not taken the screen uh, like photos of that of receiver test so that's why i'm unable to see sorry but it's not important but uh, you will do it manually only it's a manual like you will set it manually at center position it should be at center position all one so this is not necessary to do kind of so here uh, this video explains like what is self level mode and what is acro mode this is acro mode this is acro mode see how attitude is not changing of the uh, quadcopter it's moving it's it's moving in uh, same direct like it's moving in the direction which you uh, it's just, actually it's responding the stick the like uh, what you are what you are moving the stick at a particular position it will respond it and it will not if it will keep responding until unless you will move the stick towards center or it will uh, towards the particular position that right? it will you will uh, you have to take the quad pocket to its level position like manually this is self level this is self level mode okay or auto level mode here you could say that uh, here this is the toggle button or uh, toggle stick which i uh, uh, like told you before so when so it will uh, now self level is mode here you could say how much stable the aircraft is it will like stabling itself okay now i told you before the oscillation like or if you will increase the peak gain to 100 or 175 what is the oscillation which is seen in the quadcopter this is the oscillation here you could say oscill aircraft is oscillation it's not stable okay now all setup and tuning completed quadcopter ready to fly okay now uh, we will move for ccpd open pilot the connection the configuration the setup will be like the configuration what you did is same the wiring will be same the uh, like the motor mount and everything will be the only we i am changing what is the flight controller board like moving uh, like removing the flight, flight, flight controller board from the frame and fixing the flight controller cc3d open pilot so here you could say this this is the this is the receiver port here white one this is the white one this is the receiver port in this in when you will buy the cc3d open pilot you will get box you will get this kind of box so this is the port we will connect this port and this is the wire which is coming out from this red black black red white and all other wires 
so uh, this is the port which is uh, in the flight controller board first one is port which is ground one which is negative first uh, the second one is positive which is power board and the first one and the white one is the signal one the pwm signal one signal one that is channel number one for channel that is uh, for first control first function which is roll okay then second then third then fourth then fifth then sixth such kind of thing here you could see the uh, like uh, the wire which is coming out and which is uh, the function design for every wire so here uh, this is how it is connected here uh, when while connected the wire will be separated like this after connecting with uh, connecting with board okay now here comes the some uh, racing drone if you want to build racing drone okay so this is the parts uh, all of the parts are same just you have to change the frame kit motor is this is the like take a snapshot you have to like if you want to build racing drone then you can uh, like uh, buy this kind of same thing you have to buy uh, don't have to uh, go other things you will buy the same thing and you will uh, mount, uh, like mount and connect and connection will be same assembly will be same and uh, you will get to uh, like fly the racing drone so these are the parts which will come for racing drone. Transmitter is different. You could you, you can use the same transmitter which we discussed before. It's not different. Uh, only you know, the frame will be different for racing drone because for racing drone it, it is flying fast, so the, the frame is small. Okay. Setup. How to do setup and setup? Well, what we did for KK 2.1.5 it was considered of lots of steps, lots of lots of steps. If you want to omit the KK 2.1.5, you just have to. I like uh, do simple steps and nothing more to do uh, what you have to do is uh, like uh, this board this is the board you connect the board in this one first uh, like before connection i want to show you show you like uh, how to download the software for this uh, this is the liberal uh, liberpilot.org uh, .org so go to this uh, website press and download like go to download section okay now you will see here some kind of uh, like a release 16.0 or second libre pirate release lots of uh, informations are given uh, so these are some information which is will be available and this is libre pilot uh, it's a updated version of open pilot cc 3d open pilot means open pilot is the ground station which was used before but now it is, has been disconnected uh, because of some issues so it is upgraded to libre pilot l i b r e p i l o t libre pilot um, software ground control station so i am using windows for os x and other uh, like window platform you will use uh, other files to download so click on this this window one exe will exe file will be downloaded and you have to just run that file how you download the exe file of a game for, for, the, for a particular if you want to down, install the game how you download the exe file and then next 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 and you will install the software so after installing the software okay after installing the software uh, this software here the shortcut will be created on the on your desktop ground station click, double click on this It's a just a it's a simple interface. You don't have to plug any uh, kind of uh, programmer and all. You don't have to disable anything. You don't have to update any driver. You just open the software, like what you do for uh, installing game on your computer. So open this software. It will uh, like uh, appear such kind of thing. So after appearing such kind of thing, like uh, it's a interface which is forward if you're looking. It's a simple kind of thing. So now I'm opening to PPT. I will I'll later explain how to do it. So setup is like you will connect the receiver and such kind of thing. The black will go first, second, then red, white, then yellow, and kind of thing. So connect <clears throat> now after connecting this uh, to flight control board, receiver connection. The receiver connection should be such like this. The red, black, uh, red, black, red, and white. This red and <clears throat> this red, black is the power board power on like this black is negative uh, red is positive so connect the first channel it will give power to all the pins okay now white is the uh, signal for first channel so signal for first channel blue is the second channel take a screenshot remember this and it will be uh, like comfortable for you 
so blue is the second channel uh, yellow is the third channel green is the fourth channel orange is the fourth fifth channel and the sixth is the purple one okay remember this don't do uh, don't do any mistakes in connection uh, like with this and you will be go or go on top right okay now i'm moving to second one so this is how connection of motors is the same kind of connection which we did before is nothing different 1 2 3 4 5 6 signal positive negative positive negative positive and signal pin so please don't do any wrong connection it will hamper your board okay now this is a full connection you just have to do connection nothing else you have connected the board assemble is a mini copter uh, like a mini copter which i assembled the drone uh, sorry flight controller but you can same you can uh, if you, you can also use with f450 it's no you know issue to do okay so now you will uh, go next and this is the mini US, micro usb port you will have this uh, wire like the mean like the uh, wire which you use to uh, charge camera and all so you can use that wire you can get in local store connect this wire oh, sorry connect this wire and you uh, and connect the usb port one to like to your laptop and you will see the like uh, power that uh, light you will see the power light will be green light and the status light this will be there will be a status light which is green light sorry blue light and green for power red blue for power status light okay and uh, these are some process uh, on ha huh, like this you could see here arrow the arrow which i told you in kk 2.5 the arrow will be here this one arrow this arrow should be in the direction of forward direction of your fly of your quadcopter remember to this board also you should remember this arrow i am repeating should remember this arrow okay the should be in forward direction so the uh, direction of motor should be as compared to like first second third and fourth like this one uh, likewise this one so if direction is in this direction there's first motor second motor third motor fourth motor clockwise anti clockwise clockwise anti clockwise so you have to do you have to uh, like like green propeller is my forward port a forward one and the black one is for backward so i've decided it and i have put the my flight control board arrow in that direction uh, so according to that the anti uh, the like uh, the clockwise will be first this one will be first this one is second this one third this one fourth it in, it goes in anti clockwise direction so the counting counting goes in anti clockwise direction so first motor will be clockwise second motor anti clockwise clockwise anti clockwise okay now we will go for setup how to do setup when you will connect the board to computer uh, the usb port you know, to your computer uh, so what happens is uh, this setup like uh, if it it will automatically appear the uh, the screen what i showed you before the screenshot which i showed you in slide will automatically appear if it is not appearing then click on this setup wizard wizard setup like vehicle with uh, setup wizard this one the blue the yellow one the big icon click on this you will uh, the same dialog box will appear as you show uh, like seen in the slide so from there you will press next 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 and i will show you how to do it i'm closing this uh, now okay now this will appear press next and remember uh, your warning will appear the, uh, you must level your like uh, remove all the propellers like the propellers should not be connected to your uh, <clears throat> motors okay so this is the guideline it's just a guideline it's just a way to install a game like you read a guideline and you press next you read a guideline you press next it's same as like that only you don't need to calibrate anything uh, manually like we did in kk 2.1.5 you don't have to do anything you just press you, you just have to press next press next here it will uh, like appear upgrade click on upgrade here uh, please disconnect your open pilot board that is connect, uh, disconnect your usb port which is connected to your laptop so connect disconnect that you press okay now it is telling that to connect the uh, board um, back to usb port like and it, this year it will feel like it will it, it's a timer it will goes on increasing so before completing connect the board, uh, usb port to laptop okay press next now the uploading now you when you will uh, connect it and you will uh, like it will automatically appear here <clears throat> the uploading firmware so it will automatically appear like this so firmware will apply, upload and you have to press next the like board updated please press next to, to continue next it will automatically detect the connection device and the detection board type the board type which you which you are using which is open pilot copter control 3d 
CC3D kind of copter. The full form of CC3D is copter control 3D. Okay. <clears throat> Open pilot though it is detected the board it will automatically detect board okay no need to do any other thing press next now you will uh, it will tell to select the connection type with the receiver to flight controller board so what we saw is like one cable for one channel that is one it was you saw now like one cable was going to one channel that is PWM connection generally we do PWM only so uh, select it it is initially selected but select it click click on this press next. Press multi-copter, like you are flying this multi-copter, press this one. Then uh, motor, like multi-router type, the configuration. We are using X-copter, the x quad copter X configuration. So select that. There are many, there will be many configuration. So you will, uh, you have to select X configuration. Press next. Then you will like, uh, uh, like you have to set, uh, press next. And you will go in selection of ESC. Generally, we use standard ESC, so don't uh, go to this. It's a higher version uh, ESC. So uh, select standard ESC, 50 hertz rate, and then press next. So here it will show open pilot configuration summary. So here, this word, here in right side, you could see a hardware configuration. When you will click this, you will see the connection type. So uh, it's a manual, kind of manual. So it's a kind of thing. So uh, uh, cancel that and uh, come to this calibration part uh, by clicking next. So here you have to click next here. Press next and you will come to this. So calculate. Press on calculate. So when uh, when you will press calculate, uh, you have to uh, you have to not to like you don't have to calibrate uh, manually or you are don't have to calibrate your ESC manually. You just press calibrate. It will do everything. So retrieving data and done. You press next then output calibration now you have to check the output of the motors so press next and this is the slider you will uh, actually it's a mini quad so i have not dis disconnected the uh, like the propeller like it's a we are, like you, it's not necessary to connect for mini quad but if the quadcopter is large which is 451 uh, you are using larger propeller but like recommend i recommend to disconnect the propeller it's uh, it's a risky one disconnect all the propellers and like take out all the propellers okay so this is the slider bar you will keep an increasing and decreasing it will show the like uh, motor response uh, motor response like rpm increasing and decreasing. Uh, it will do you will do for all the four motors then press next then press save your configuration will be saved so it will be saved and now comes for radio setup the transmitter setup uh, which will be like uh, the flight controller will be responsive okay press next it will appear like this okay it will be like the uh, flight controller is always this armed position so for for safety purpose okay press okay now you will come into input configuration press next and then uh, normal transmitter we are using normal transmitter so select acro and press next we are using mode 2 transmitter that is rudder rudder shutter and rudder, throttle and rudder is on left and elevator and ailerons, ailerons are on right so press next so move throttle stick it will guide step by step to move throttle stick that is to see the uh, response is uh, perfect or not then move roll stick then this is how it will respond on the display okay and then you will move the throttle stick then press stick uh, to center bring all the stick to center and press next it will calibrate your stick then it will move to arm setting arm setting means that uh, which movement of stick you are you are you will use yeah you are you are, you are comfortable to arm or disarm the flight controller board so for arming the flight control bolt, select here always here it is always disarmed because it is it is a default setting to uh, like this uh, software. So all select on this like drop down list will be appear. Then I I will select like or uh, your right. So your right will be my arm position. Your left will be the opposite of that will be disarmed. So I've selected your right. Okay, and the arm timing is 30 seconds. It's default to leave it like that only now save it okay now the settings has been done so how appears when it is disarmed so this is how when i uh, moved my stick towards right the your stick that is the throw this one the left stick the left part of uh, the transmitter the stick when i will move the your stick towards right then the uh, board will be armed see here blink you could see here blink so this is the status of the army <clears throat> okay
now comes camera setup if you want to do fpv for example you have to install camera on your drone so how you have to do because uh, the calibration thing is have done everything has done the quadcopter is stable ready to fly without camera but if you have to install camera so you uh, for lcd display like you, if you want to have a lcd display and you uh, if you want to have a display on your lcd uh, lcd monitor which have to, which will have to like you have to buy from online store so uh, for lcd display uh, you have to need a high definition cmos camera with 2.8 mm it's a camera and uh, a, like lens fpv camera for rc drone multicopter then you have to have eh835 ps835 fpv 2.8 5.8 gigahertz 600 megawatt 48 channel wireless av transmitter which will be installed on the drone and a receiver which will uh, feed uh, which will receive the data from the transmitter which uh, like the feed which is given by the camera the camera which is uh, recording which is uh, which uh, is recorded by the camera so it is connected to your uh, this lcd monitor a uh, seven inch monitor display how it is connected see this is the camera which you will buy online i will show you where to buy uh, where to buy and how to buy so this is the camera this is a uh, like wire which is coming out same goes for camera also there's a light color wire which is yellow color wire is a signal pin this red is positive and the black is negative remember the polarity always this is a uh, uh, transmitter this one is transmitter and this one is receiver like the big one is receiver and the small one is transmitter which is installed on the drone and the receiver is which you with with yourself which is connected to your lcd okay now this is the wire which is can come with this uh, transmitter ps835 this is the red one is gst wire which will give power to this uh, transmitter and this is the uh, servo connector a servo extension wire kind of if, like you will get in the packet itself you don't have to buy separately with this two so what you have to do is uh, the like uh, you have to this is the gst wire what i was talking about this is the female one this is the male one okay so this is the uh, male one this is the male one like it, it will sorry this is the female one it will connect to this uh, kind of uh, transmitter so this is a gst wire this is a receiver and uh, remember here like here even you have my you might have question like this is ts835 series then why i'm using rc832 i have i should have used 835 because 832 and 835 835 is the uh, upgraded version but the channel and frequency are same so there is no difference in uh, like uh, pairing pairing both the receiver and transmitter so only uh, it is having microphone 832 is not having microphone there is only a, only one difference so i can use that i, I can use this 832 with that uh, transmitter okay so here this are uh, the ports in the uh, like this receiver this is AV output one, AV output two. That is video output one, video output two. If I if I, if I want a dual video output, like for FPV uh, goggles, there are dual uh, video outputs. So, uh, I, I, like I am having a screen, so I will use any one of them. AV output one, and this is the DC 12 volt supply to this receiver. You can use adapter also, DC 12 volt adapter, which is available in the market, or you can use the. Uh, oh, sorry, this is the like this one is yellow one is the video output and this red one is the audio output uh, which will give which will give the audio uh, like it will connect uh, to the screen then it will give the audio transmission of the drone which is installed in uh, the transmitter the, the transmitter feedback audio transmitter feed, the feedback of the trans, transmitter audio feedback of the transmitter and this will give video feedback of the transmitter so this is the connector uh, this which will be connected to your lcd uh, sorry uh, receiver R R 832 this one this one RC 832 here here it will connect it here okay this one so this is the wire which will give power supply this is the JST wire which will connect to the battery and and this is the one which will go to 12 volt power supply to receiver okay now this is how we connect uh, a camera to a receiver this is the connection here you could see the yellow wire is always on uh, you could say the uh, left side like left side you could say left side and the right black one is on the right side so know this connection take a screenshot and remember it now we have connected the battery uh, the red one is on again on the left side and the black one is on the so here also red one is on the left side and the black one is on the right side 
so remember the connection the polarity should be uh, same as that of yeah, you can you can direct connect the battery to this uh, receiver but remember there are some receiver who wants 5 volts so you need to have a uh, 5 volts of power supply okay <clears throat> Now we will move to LCD display. Here I have told you before the video one, uh, the yellow one is the video feedback of the transmitter. So I will connect that uh, this LCD display video uh, pin, the yellow pin, yellow pin to this pin, and I will connect to receiver. And uh, this here, here you can see the here 41 it is written. Here, this is the frequency and channel four cha fourth like the frequency fourth uh, fourth part of the frequency and the channel number one. So the same 41 here, which you have selected the button. There will be a button, the this FR and CH button. So select FR frequency and select channel, which should be uh, same for 40, which is displayed 41. And for receiver, it should be same for that only, like 41, 41. It it shouldn't be different. So then only it can feed feed the data. So this will this this is the feedback of video feedback of the camera. This is what we do for LCD. Uh, FPV now comes for Android. If you if you want to connect Android your phone uh, to camera, you have to receive the video feedback on your phone. The so the transmitter and receiver you have to is PS five eight two six. Uh, it's different. It's different for this PS five eight two eight six hundred megawatt forty eight channel mini transmitter and UCG U sorry UVC OTG UVC OTG Android phone receiver. This is how it looks. This is the uh, receiver. So. <clears throat> The connection is uh, like yeah, there are uh, like it is pre previous like it's initially connected, but what uh, I sh showed you before you can connect it directly like that only. That is the signal to signal, positive to positive, and negative to negative. So the connection will might look like this. So uh, this one, the positive and negative supply, which you which is here the 7.4 uh, 7.5 12 volt, and this one ground, which is positive, which is uh, sorry uh, negative. Which is black wire and the red wire one. So the red wire and the black wire one, you should separate. At a, there should be a mediator, or you could cut the wire and you could solder it. The positive and the negative uh, solder it here, and the lipo battery connection you can also solder it here. So there is a GST connection. You can also make it as a GST connection, uh, depending on your choice how you do it. Okay. So you have power supplied. Now what you do? Uh, now select the power supply, like the signal pin, the signal wire of the camera, and sold uh, like connect to this, this one. And uh, uh, you could say that this wire which is coming out from this channel, select the wire, yellow wire, and solder it to uh, like uh, the channel, the signal, signal, sorry, signal wire of the camera. And you have done with this, okay? And install uh, on the drone. Now this is the uh, like uh, this is the receiver which you will connect which you will connect to phone. Here you could say arrow. So connect this arrow to phone, okay, and connect this arrow here going inside arrow to receiver. This arrow should be follow the direction, which is uh, take the take a screenshot so that you uh, didn't like you have to not to do like uh, mistake and all. And connect this for uh, this uh, part to phone, and uh, download this software uh, like uh, software or app application from uh, play store which is easy cap and uvc player fpv viewer okay when you will connect this uh, to phone it will uh, like first when you will it is disconnected i have not connected my phone to this uh, receiver so it is uh, uh, previously it is, uh, like uh, it is dis, uh, like uh, appearing to disconnected but when you will connect the wire it will here appear automatically to appear connected and here you could see the appear Feedback will be uh, the video. Uh, video will be start like streaming on your phone. Here is the gallery which is saved video will be appear. No video it is available, so it's no video. So this is how all the setup you have to do. Your mini uh, call software is ready and like then fly it. Now some practice shot you have to do uh, to fly the call software. What is this like? You have to uh, like uh, this is the for, uh, forward motion and backward motion, like forward motion and this one uh, rotate your like move it towards stick right and you will practice the forward motion and the uh, backward motion of the drone okay now this is the rectangle motion like you have to do how how to fly the drone rectangle in a rectangle motion so practice this shot you will be able to fly the drone perfectly 
and this is the uh, basic um, like first initiation to practice the drone we have to fly the drone actually okay and this is the circle how to how you will fly the drone in circular motion like move the your stick towards left and the roll one roll one the roll one stick the roll one towards right so it does move uh, it will move in circular motion this is eight how you will make eight with drone so this is a movement of stick observe it carefully how it goes and this is how eight can we can make it okay now uh, this is how the movement of the stick and you will can fly the drone in zigzag manner okay so now actually uh, yeah, thank you for uh, so this is the end of the workshop and let me uh, like uh, like tell you like how to buy how to buy the stuffs from here amazon you will buy the kit uh, go on amazon right uh, like uh, type the quadcopter kit if you want to buy this f of 50 diy so you will buy here it's around 10000 whole kit will you can buy around 10000 so around like uh, you don't have to purchase uh, separately all the things you have to you just uh, buy here and you will get all the kit and second uh, if you want to buy the cc 3d one like if you want to buy the cc 3d one so go here this is one also one uh, website to buy electronics which is robo.in take a screenshot of this robo.in and you will buy the open pilot cc 3d and you will you can use this now for buying hd camera you can also buy in robo.in here the same camera which i used in today is here okay now to buy the lcd display seven inch monitor display screen this is the seven inch monitor display so you will get uh, along this with this pins and all uh, this one this pins and all and you you can uh, this is the yellow one is the video feedback and you can connect this uh, lcd display and all so and second fpv this is the like transmitter and receiver what i use was this and this is you can see a ts835 fpv this one is the transmitter and uh, this one is the receiver uh, this one yeah this one 832 rc 832 you can buy your uh, robot every like everything is available here and secondly uh, for uh, yeah this this much only and for buying uh, robo kits yeah this one so here you could buy in robo kits india this robo kits india this is the robo kits india website here you could buy for uh, like android version like if you want to buy for uh, transmitter and receiver for android you can buy here so you can see here this is the uvc receiver which will connect the phone and this is the like see you will get a complete set and you will can learn from your description what is what uh, you are getting from this this is a ps uh, transmitter receiver removable uh, antenna and all and this and this is the antenna you have to connect this yeah, yeah this one you have to connect this antenna to this uh, to receive uh, to transmitter and also to receiver this one antenna then only you can operate and transmit and receive the signals and all and uh, like before completing the ppt i want to know that when you will install the camera at front of the drone install it properly so that you can have a clear videography or video uh, feedback of uh, what you want to see from the drone so this uh, with this uh, i end the workshop and i try uh, so good morning sir and this is you can uh, like have a so can i have any question answer session with this hello yeah uh, hamid uh, see the thing is there are few questions in the question panel so, uh, okay. Professor Anurag, are you there? Professor Umesh Gunani, are you there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Will you take the questions? Will you take the questions? Or I will read out the questions for you? Yes, sir. Do you want sir. me to read out the questions? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Professor Hamilton can do that. Okay, sir. I, I, uh, okay. So, the first question is, actually, uh, so many students have asked about the PPT and the online uh, we can say the online workshop the recording of the online workshop so we'll be sending the ppt to all the students and we'll be uploading the recording also the recording will be uploaded to uem jaipur official channel so i will request all attendees to kindly subscribe to the uem jaipur you search by uem jaipur official channel in youtube you'll get the uem jaipur official channel we upload all the videos all the lectures all recordings over there so if you subscribe to that, you will get this video also, the recording of this whole thing. 
and as said the ppt will be mailed to uh, the register uh, the, all the registered attendees okay you go ahead uh, professor anurag okay uh, so the uh, one question is from uh, mr rupam is asking i have two motors 1400 kv and two motors uh, 1000 kv can i make quadcopter with these motors no no actually the motor what you was what you will select will be of same kv rating it shouldn't be different because what happens when you will select a, a 1400 kv motor for example for first two motors are of 1400 kv motor and the first uh, the last two motors the, the other two motors are of 1000 kv motor what happens is the thrust there is a variation in thrust so you, you the drones will get flipped like it will for example 1000 kv motor it will increase the thrust and 1400 kv motor it, it is not able to uh, produce thrust what uh, what is produced by the 1000 kv motor the drone will be not stable it will get flips and it will crash it will not fly only so you need to have same kv <coughs> same kv same kv uh, rating motor for all the like all the four motors like <coughs> if you want to select 1400 kv motor then select uh, 1400 only for all the fours if you want to select thousand, then select thousand. And also, propeller should also be same. Propeller should not be different. Uh, if you are selecting nine inch into four point five inch, then the, it should be same for all the four motors. Okay, thank you, Amit. Uh, the next question: uh, Can I use solar sheet to power the quadcopter instead of battery? Yeah, actually, uh, you can use solar uh, solar shade, but uh, the cap like you what what uh, the solar system does it does is like uh, uh, you have to set up a separate uh, unit to store the charge. Like like uh, it's when you are charging, like you have to uh, you have to solar like you have to solar cell, like have to have a solar cell also and have to have a like a battery also so that uh, for a backup. Like if uh, something happens, if uh, there is no sunlight and also uh, like uh, you do, you can't store the charge, like what uh, amount of charge, which is uh, uh, like given out, like what the solar panel is giving out. So uh, it will increase weight un like unwanted weight. So if you want to make a solar panel, so uh, like generally what we do is like uh, we make large pot copters like large uh, quad copter like like hell which can carry heavy weight and all so for this you can't use solar panel you have to have a separate panel assembly and all so uh, but fixed wing in fixed wing what we do is fixed wing you can assemble the solar panel it can because in fixed wing it is capable to carry payload uh, uh, depending on the wing like when you, you are installing because there are large surface area na, on the wing so the surface area is large uh, so the output voltage will be more but in drone there are no surface area there's a surface area is less so you can't install the required amount of solar panel so uh, this is the difference like this is why you can't install a uh, solar panel on drone but in fixed wing it is easier to install uh, because surface area is more so you can install and you can uh, have a control like separate uh, panel assembly and you can fly it with solar power but uh, drone is it is difficult because the surface area is less Okay, thank you, Amit. So the Mr. Kartik is asking that I have built my drone by myself, and fortunately, it matches with all the instructions given by you, but it fails to take off. Actually, uh, why it is happening? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, what is the name of the student? Kartik, Mr. Kartik Bhatnagar. Kartik. Yeah, Kartik. Actually, uh, what you did was what the uh, step you missed is the throttle calibration part. Uh, generally, student uh, is uh, like don't know how to do throttle calibration. What I told, like press uh, in KK 2.1.5, you have to press first button and the fourth button simultaneously. Okay, and uh, after switching on the transmitter and moving the throttle uh, stick to maximum position. After doing that, press and the power should not be the, the battery should be disconnected of the flight controller board. The battery should not be connected. So press uh, first button and the fourth button. Okay. Now connect the battery without leaving hand. You should have, you should not have to remove hand uh, from first button and the fourth button of the KK 2.5. If you are using KK 2.5, okay. Now connect the battery and uh, don't remove your hand, okay. Uh, and then lower the stick of the transmitter, a throttle stick of the transmitter, and switch off the transmitter. Or you, could, you, 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 like if you will leave without switching on, then it is uh, nothing happen. It will not, it will nothing happen. And then remove your. Uh, 
like uh, hand after hearing three beep first beep will be short beep second will be second beep will, will also be a short beep and the third one will be a long one okay this is for kk 2.1.5 but if you are using a cc3d flight controller you don't have to face uh, such kind of thing uh you, when you will do such all the setup and all the calibration uh, which i showed you how to do it so uh, the quadcopter will definitely fly it is uh, like it will uh, it will uh, do response like do response to your uh, throttle stick or it Thank might you, happen uh, okay so uh, mr saurav pal is asking that after the calibration uh, takes place can i extend the receiving range for long range connections uh actually uh, for long range connection what you do is the receiver what you what we are using which is 2.45 gigahertz is capable to receive and uh, send uh, the data at 1 kilometer range only but uh, there are one uh, there is one receiver uh, and transmit uh, like receiver which uh, uh, for for the, like for a particular transmitter is our rdf 900 you have seen before also uh in nasa a light what i uh, what the receiver i let me show you thing the receiver which i used with nasa light uh, in wiring connection is um, this receiver r90 or you could say rf90 uh, uh, rfd900 so this receiver can receive signal up to 8, 10 km so if you want to uh, increase your receiving uh, like uh, if you want to receive at a higher range or 100 km more than 100 km then you have to select this receiver uh, compatible with this transmitter it will get in pair when you will type it you will get in pair okay thank you amit so mr tanmay is asking what is current rating of 3.7 volt coreless motor for small drone coreless motor so actually yes, 3.7 uh, volt what, can you please okay can you please repeat the question sir yes i I'll, i'll be repeating it what is current rating of 3.7 volt coreless motor for small drone actually uh, like uh, for three, like you have to say like what uh, what i told before the kv rating okay that is not current rating that is kv rating okay Uh, actually if you want to uh, see that what is the current drawn by that motor for 3.7 volt what is you are saying that uh, it's a output voltage uh, input voltage for that motor so the kv rating depends depends like if you google it uh, for example depends on your quadcopter weight oh, how much weight is what is the total weight of the uh, your quadcopter so depending on that you have to select the uh, kv rating so actually uh this this is the micro drone the smallest drone the coreless drone actually motor so i didn't share that thing because uh, mostly people don't prefer coreless motor to buy and to build drone uh so because mostly people like the, because this uh, this uh, workshop is based on basic drone which is which i discussed you uh, the coreless motor if you want to know about coreless motor then you can mail me i can i will send you i will send you a manual uh, in that manual uh, there is a range that there is a table also and there is are some uh, uh, configuration and set of instruction given with coreless motor because coreless motor is uh, rarely available on uh, in, in also in a general store and uh, online store but in online store you can get in robo.in i think so so uh, you could use that manual and instruction to buy uh, that coreless motor because i will further explain then it will be difficult but the same the uh, the rating what we do with uh, this bldc is a kind of same but uh, uh, difference is like uh, it's a coreless motor so uh, it the output is less as comparable to bldc like uh, it it only applies to smaller the micro drone the, the smallest drone which uh, is used to build so if you want to have then uh, you can use this mail id my instructor uh, mail id and you can mail me uh, i will send you the instruction on manual and you will get to know how what to do and how to do okay thank you amit uh, next question from khalin mohan uh, if propeller induces vortices why don't manufacturers add winglets to the propeller 
uh, actually uh, winglets is a property of fixed wing only uh, you could say because uh, fixed wing is not having pitch but the propeller is having pitch what happens is when you will apply uh, winglets then uh, the air flow the air flow which is moving uh, from upward that will reduce reduce at the tip so what happens is the the amount of lift generation of that propeller will be reduced so uh, that is the concept of fixed wing aircraft winglets because airfoil as we know that airfoil shape of the uh, like uh, the fixed wing is having a pressure difference and uh, using the winglets redu reduces the vortices produced by pressure difference here the vortices are forming due to relative flow of the air so difference here there is a difference between both so we can't use winglet uh, in uh, propeller because propeller is like of course it is having an airfoil shape but there is also a pitch there is also tilt in the propeller so it dip, uh, it uh, sucks in the air and the air flow there is a air flow uh, above the propeller and downward the propeller so there is no chance of uh, like um, kind of uh, you could say that uh, uh, lift generation due to air flow like what in what is what happens in fixed wing the air flows horizontally but here air flow is moving vertically so uh, there will, that will not induce the induction the induction of vortices is not due to pressure difference it's just due to relative motion of the air flow so in propellers but in fixed wing it is a uh, uh, vortex formation is due to pressure difference above the wing and lower the wing this is why we uh, manufacturers are not like it is not uh, like uh, Com cap uh, capable like compatible to uh, make winglets on propellers it will reduce lift what is uh, thrust actually it's a thrust of the propeller which is generated by the uh, by them thank you amit uh, next question from other shannon is uh, he's asking is there any way to store the energy from moving bldc motors and again use it to power the drone yeah actually there are uh, several modules for example uh, you could say that uh, uh, like you the one we used dynamometer kind of sensor is there so what we did is uh, like uh, uh, what if you want to store uh, there are like the motor is spinning at particular rpm but the difference is that you have to uh, like this is for example uh, what how to explain the cylindrical shape of the motor so is a, uh, there is a cylindrical shape of the motor when you will connect the dyno uh, dynamometer at the side position so it will roll along with the motor and it will generate power there is a module available on the internet which uh, which uh, generates power from the bldc motor but generally we don't do because it reduces rpm of the motor by small amount because you are increasing the load on the motor as per propeller also and plus uh, to charge the battery so you are drawing power from motor output power of the motor from propeller also and from that dynamo so uh, when you will extract the power from pow uh, the like motor power then it will efficiency will decrease so generally we don't do that uh, but uh, some kind of uh, drone is available or research paper is available actually drone now research paper is available um, practically it is not possible because it reduces the power of the bldc uh, and uh, so this so due to this reason uh, man um, drone manufacturer don't do this Kind of, but there are also one, uh, like uh, in I Triple E, there is one I Triple E. Uh, in uh, there is a research paper. What they did is like they build a platform on the drone, and a supply drone will come, like uh, so, uh, the drone battery, what we call drone battery. So on that platform, there are four copper uh, platform. So what we did, and the uh, like base of the that the battery drone is the copper. so when the when it is uh, like when it is uh, mounted on the the drone the main drone which is flying so uh, for example 11.1 volt uh, volt uh, the battery what we are using is 11.1 volt it get discharged and uh, and if you want to supply the power externally so that you can fly little more longer so uh, a battery drone is there it will go and dock uh, docking docking property is there above the drone like it will dock above the drone and the power supply which is uh, uh, given like which is which that power battery drone is having it will dock and it will supply the power to uh, drone main drone so it is a small and micro drone uh, so that will uh, that which is called battery drone that will supply external power so you could fly a little more longer this is how uh, this is a research paper which is 
has been performed practically also and theoretically also. Okay, thank you, Amit. So some of the students have asked about the training and internship. So yes, we do provide training and internship. Personally, you can contact us. Our uh, mobile number and email IDs are given. And one of the students have asked about a certificate. Yes, a certificate will be provided to you. It will be reaching your mail. And now I'll hand over to uh, uh, Professor Umesh Gurnani. Hello. I hope I'm uh, audible and visible both. Yes, yes, you are audible. Yes. Uh, so, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, thanks to all the attendees for joining us today. There was a very good participation from and colleges of uh, different parts of India. Uh, within a very small span of time, like seven to ten days, we crossed more than six hundred. It shows that the audience are very passionate about learning on drones. We received many phone calls from school students and their guardians who even asked us to shift the workshop timing as like 10 to 1 in the morning is usually a time for online classes for school students. So I'd like to assure you that those who are unable to attend the workshop today in a full-fledged mode, we'll be conducting another workshop for all of them and also the students who are passionate to learn about autopilot drones, RC aircrafts, we'd like to help you uh, as much as possible. We have a dedicated team of Aero Modeling who keeps on working on these projects as you have seen. So you can contact any three of us and uh, we will try to assist you, guide you in all the ways that we can. Uh, so once again, thanks to all of uh, all of you for joining us and special thanks to Hamid as he has been working on this since last 15 days on this presentation and uh, uh, Professor Dr. Anurag Hamilton for organizing this workshop. And uh, thanks to our VC sir, Professor Dr. Vishuja Chetajan, who has always been supportive and to us at all the times. So uh, thank you and have a great day. Uh, it's over to you, VC sir. You can add something and later on we can adjourn this workshop. No, uh, it's, it's been long. I will not add anything more today. Thanks to all the attendees. Thanks to all the participants. So we are ending it today. Thank you. We'll see you soon. Thank you so much. And thank you, Hamid. Special thanks to you. Thank, thank you. you.